Salutations. Welcome to the Cars, Bars, and Guitars podcast, episode number 73. I'm AJ. I'm Steve. Steve, who are we brought to you today by? I had something for this. <laughs> <laughs> While you think about that, uh, we would like to welcome back our first repeat guest, Mr. Brian Layton. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me back. What's fun is he's, he's I think he was and roll. I think he was the last guest we had. <laughs> wow, has it been that long? What? I, I think so. Wow. I think so because he had just he had just got the scoopra. So yeah, and, and oddly enough, and since then we've both swapped cars. Uh, yeah, well, you swapped <laughs> cars. I swapped two cars. Yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, the, just in general, of uh, uh, exchanges have occurred. Right. I sold a convertible sports car and a Jeep, and I bought a convertible Jeep. I uh, <laughs> I got rid of a Toyota that wasn't quite a Toyota, and got another Toyota that, let's face it, it's a Toyota. Mm, very fair. <laughs> well, uh, Brian, what are you drinking? I am sipping on Hop Drop and Roll from Noda, which is one of my. All time favorites. Absolutely, it's it's uh, award winning for a good reason. Absolutely, uh, that reminds me, I didn't get pick up the sticky one wet, so that was probably already gone. Mm, I'll I'll have we can message Chad. Yes, if anybody would have it, yeah, Chad would <laughs> he, have. He it. would know. <laughs> uh, well, Steve, swap up a special batch just in case. Steve, what beer are you drinking? Uh, I've cracked neither of these yet, but I have brought the Narragansett. Bless you, Oktoberfest. And the Stone Enter Night Pilsner, which, which now tastes more like an IPA. Which you had on the last episode, but you were doing it through that little through, phone Through the there. internet web, and mm, yeah. uh, now you can, and you can, and I can. Brian already beat us to it. And oh, one, sorry. and a two, and one for you. <laughs> Yay, you picked yours out. I didn't pick mine out. Your can's louder than my can. What the hell, Rhode Island? Are we sharing a... Uh, no, we're not sharing beers. No, okay. I, I brought plenty for everybody, just like chewing gum. I'm all out of gum. <sighs> yeah, you're right. It does kind of taste like an IPA. Um, it's from Stone. What do you expect? Yeah, well, we are also <laughs> drinking Woodford's Reserve. <laughs> Take two. Woodford Reserve Kentucky Straight Malt Whiskey. It's not a bourbon. It's a malt whiskey. And mm. Steve, you've never it's had not, this before, <laughs> have you? Wait, so then that makes it a malt liquor? <clears throat> yes. And Brian said he enjoyed it? I did, yeah. What did it remind you most of, you think? Um, it actually reminds me of a bourbon, just a little bit on the lighter side, a little more like a weedy flavor maybe versus the vanilla and oak and that, that heavy. You know what? I thought the first time I had it, it reminded me of if Crown Royal tried to make a bourbon. Yes. That's exactly like what a Canadian it, bourbon. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Slancha. Yeah. <clears throat> Canadian bourbon be a great band name. <laughs> But it's incredibly smooth. I mean, very much. Yeah. G- Stevie likes it, and Mikey probably would too. Mikey's a Steve's brother. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> uh, so Brian, uh, we went through your car history in the last episode. So why don't you tell everybody, uh, kind of everything you've done to the car since you've had it, and keep us up to uh, keep us up to speed with everything. Quite literally. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I've actually had the car about a year now, surprisingly, um, which I guess time flies when you're quarantined and not driving it. So <laughs> I parked it in March at 8,500 miles and brought it back out uh, about what six months later with 9,500 miles. So <laughs> it's I didn't drive it for a very long time. But did you have anything else you were driving in that time? No, just working from home, okay. not not even really going anywhere. So um, during that time, I was just kind of collecting parts that were being released and I got wheels and tires on and I collected, um, a downpipe, which is a big kind of restriction on the Supra. Um, uh, got a charge pipe just because, um, that's probably more cosmetic than anything else. Got an intake also cosmetic, but has some, some performance advantages once you get tuned, got some things like some strut bars and some carbon fiber pieces, and then um, just this last week, went to a local shop here, Soho Motorsports, got everything installed, um, exhaust, downpipe, charge pipe. My intake was already installed and got it tuned. Did you go down to Brighton to play at Silver Ball? Yeah. <laughs> 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 What's the guy's name? Tommy. <laughs> Tommy so, the cab is good for you. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, the car really... He's deaf, dumb, and blind. Really, mm-hmm. really changed. Um, the baseline was, I think, 330... 
horsepower with I can't remember now, but I don't know, four hundred torque or something that like that. Sounds right. Mm-hmm. And it went up to now I'm four fifty horsepower to the wheels with about five thirty torque. Um so very significant pickup. And not only that, that's tuned horsepower too. Like, tuned horsepower. Yeah, that that's incredible. People look at that top number a lot, and you should, but it's that area under the grab that you can gain 40 to 50 pound-feet of torque, and that makes all the difference in traffic. Right. Yeah, so it hits it hits really, really hard and then stays there. So um, I have yet to have the balls to put my foot to the floor. You know, all, all my past cars that had power were all-wheel drive, <laughs> which I feel is a little bit cheating. So mm-hmm. this one a little, you know, it'll start to get a little squirrely on you in the back end. So, yeah. you know, um, you don't always have to turn off trash control. Right, At least, right. you know, test it a bit. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, meanwhile, I'm doing that on rainy days, like driving like a maniac getting to work in the morning. Um, one morning, I set it off a dozen times. <laughs> You know, with, it, in, even with only 140 horses, that's still entertaining. I've still yeah. not done it in the Jeep yet <laughs> Ooh. because it weighs a fucking thousand yeah. pounds, <laughs> a million pound, thousand pounds, million pounds, uh, weighs a thousand pounds, a million thousand. <laughs> Forty two hundred is two that's, tons. That's, that's a bunch of ounces. Two tons and two hundred. <laughs> but um, Mathis is that's really good. Uh, and if you need help with that wide open throttle run, I, I know I know a couple guys who would be help, you know, <laughs> could help you with that sort of thing. I tell you, it's been a it's been a long time since a, I re- honestly felt a little hesitant behind the wheel. That's fun though. Oh, it is. <laughs> it's an absolute blast. I love it. So, yeah. The thing is, you don't think you would get bored. Those numbers, I don't think on the street you would get bored with. I don't think so. I mean, if I do, I think I have a problem. Yeah, I mean, y- you. If you're all about the number chasing, like well, I think we had a we, when we went to Duckworth's last weekend, it's like you can go on number chasing, but a 500 horsepower car on the street is a fucking monster. It's fast, yeah, yeah. Like, it really is. Like the guys who are running the nine second quarter miles are running way more, and they don't. Those are not daily drivers, <laughs> right? <laughs> those are not right. really comfortable cars to be in for right. a long period of time. So there's or, something. Or to, the soup is definitely going to be a comfortable car, of course. Yeah, yeah. I rode it. It was. It was it, but I'll be honest, like after selling the S2000 and being in the Jeep all the time, it felt like my ass was dragging the ground, which honestly, it kind of, kind of is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you're pretty, yeah, you're pretty close. And you haven't ridden a new one yet, have you? No, of course, what? The, the, my car. No. It's not. currently a super mess right now because it's my car, but <laughs> one, one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it, It's a box on wheels and it's being treated as such. <laughs> hmm. I I see your box on wheels. If yours is a box, what is mine? <laughs> a box of your box. Yes. Uh, I've almost cheers myself. Uh, so any – are you done with the modification buck for now? No, because of the – well, from, from a power Check perspective. Next month. Okay. From, from, from a, a power perspective, yeah, because mm-hmm. now, now if I take the next step, now you're talking new turbos and and things of that nature, and I'm not there because it is a daily driver. So, Are they hard to get to? No. They're very, very easy to get uh, to that's a new turbo. surprising, actually. Yeah. But that's, that's really good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, super easy. Since, since I got the new old car, I've already put almost 8,000 miles on it. <laughs> He's a driver. <laughs> yeah, uh, the it, it's a twenty mile commute one way. Oh my god! Yeah, Versus I've never had I, my longest commute has been fifteen minutes. Oof, and tops. That's like, good. That's real good. Oh, I used cool. to have a real real long one in Florida. That this was years and years ago, mm-hmm. but it was sixty miles one way. Fuck that! Wow. Yeah. yeah. God, they would have to give me a handy every time I clocked in. Like, yeah. I mean, luckily it's Florida, so if you're doing sixty miles, it'll take you an hour. Versus mm-hmm. here, if you're sixty miles, it'll take you four hours. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that is true. I will say, you know, that was a little bit of an advantage, but it definitely wore on me. Jeez. Yeah. And he's thinking about moving back to <laughs> back to Sunshine State. Well, yeah. But, yeah. Um, and I looked at well, that area too, and it's a nice area. So take the show on well, the road. Um, <laughs> well. I've been working for Carvana since March, and every time I have to peel off a Florida toll pass, it cracks me up every time because it says, buckle up, Florida. It's like, oh, yeah. There's not enough space on it to say, it's going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> 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 but that cracks me up every time I peel off a uh, sunshine pass. Are there a lot of cars from Florida? Uh, I'll, I'll see a couple a week. Okay. And you know the, the detail department is supposed to remove that, as well as many other things I keep finding. So, uh, yeah, it's... 
minimum effort, uh, not exactly minimum wage work, but it's proof. Uh, you get what you the, pay the bar's for, I guess, low. Yeah. Yeah. What we what we need to do is pick out Brian a D a DD for his inevitable move back to to the Bradenton Tampa area. So I'm thinking Baja Bug or Subaru Baja. <laughs> Uh, Ooh, turbo. Subaru Baja turbo. Would be awesome. That'd be incredible. Manual. Yeah, the, ma- the, the 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 that would be a because I, I, I think but, uh, trying yes. to do um, a Yaris for Ebor is a little too odd. <laughs> you could do a right hand. You could do like a little Honda. The, what is that like the Acti, warehouse like the van, the right drive van. Yeah. <laughs> whatever Ebor City is. I just remember that being like, <laughs> what the fuck kind of name is Ebor? Y B O R. Isn't that the uh, thing monster looking thing? Oh, that's Igor. <laughs> Igor. Welcome to this day. <laughs> <laughs> All you need is young wait, Frankenstein. Wait, it's, it's awesome. A, it's a gore. A we're, gore. Putting, we're putting emphasis, emphasis on the wrong syllable. Uh, you know, uh, I don't think anyone ever watched that movie, mm. but that's the only takeaway from that ad. Yeah. Mike well, Myers and some terrible thing that is not. The love guru. Gugh. Gugh. That I would, I'd rather eat your shirt three times than watch that I just got this. Movie. What the hell? <laughs> So no, uh, so no power mods, but nah. I don't really think it needs any suspension mods either. I think it sets quite nicely from the factory. It does sit nicely. I want to, I, I do want to tighten it up a little bit. So I'll, I'll get some springs on it and drop it a, an inch or so and stiffen it up. Yeah. Which my tuners even suggested that he said because it'll it'll start to kind of walk on you a little bit. And I then, gotcha. um, when I got the new wheels, which were wider in preparation of more power and everything i just switched over the street tires because i wasn't really driving it anyway so mm-hmm. they're a little bit stretched yeah and not, not bad not though. bad yeah but it, to the point where now that i have some more power there i'm, I'm going to replace the wheels with or the tires themselves with wider tires what are the back tires on that uh 275 i thought they were wider than that yeah then and you, you have probably two put a 295 on it right, right. Okay. that's and that's my plan so I think I have 255 in the front, 275 in the rear. Okay. And I'm going to basically move 275 to the front and then go 295 in the rear. Okay. That, that, that'll tighten. Because I, I, I don't like the square stance on, on rear-wheel drive cars. I always mm-hmm. like my, my, my rear to have – because now I've had, I've had three cars that had staggered stances. So you haven't had – all of yours have been square. Yeah, everything's been square. This is yeah. my first stagger. Really? Yeah. But That's right, because you had all-wheel all drive All-wheel drive, cars. they were but all the I've same, yeah. always yeah. – I've always had you know nothing necessitating such like the most powerful thing I ever had was a Camry <laughs> with the 190 horsepower 1993 V6. You decadent capitalist pig. <laughs> that was also the biggest engine at three liters well, per the first episode. You know the story on now the stock wheels were uh, the back ones were 16 by nine, which is a really hard damn. yeah tire to find now. You can get like Goodyear and then like. Chinese Bob's brand, and that's fucking almost about it. <laughs> uh, they are literally called Ling Wong. Thank you very much. Long Wang? Or, I <laughs> know, <laughs> <laughs> <Not> Richard. <laughs> uh, I don't miss buying parts for that car. Uh, I do miss it every now and then just for the um, looks. But like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> when, I, when I lived in Raleigh, I had a co worker at the Sam's Club tire shop that was restoring an 82 Supra. And trying to upgrade the 14-inch wheels to 16s proved quite difficult, <laughs> given the offsets and whatever black magic was in place for that. Were they four lug or five? Four. Nice. Yeah. Um, just the confluence of what's the right offset versus the desired larger wheel. Prill had to be a custom order. I could and imagine. then about as soon as he got the wheels and the car almost running, his family decided to move to Tennessee, and I never got to see the finished product. Oh, only saw the pictures of work in progress that the tailgate had been quite tin wormed. Yeek! Uh, because eighties Toyota. True, but no, nobody no, nobody tin canned anything like the owner of your second GTI. <laughs> <laughs> what was it called? Your no, insurance it was, called? Uh, no, it was the first GTI that was the. Uh, the the driver of this car has crashed and is in critical condition. Like, I'm terribly sorry. I have sold this. It's no longer insured. It's no longer registered to me. There's nothing I can do for you. Is he an organ donor? Because, I mean, my uh, liver. I, I need a backup. I actually remember the guy's name, and uh, that's never yielded anything on any social media, not even MySpace. He's dead. Oh, well. 
Well, he lived a noble life in a great car. Uh, you know, it's, it's really funny that I bought the car for three, sold it for two, and had it still been intact, it would be worth ten now. Just, That's got to be the starkest difference <clears throat> of anything since I've ever owned. <laughs> Uh, you should have called. Like, hey, is, yeah, he, is like, he okay? Can I have my cranberry CD back? It's under the passenger seat. Uh, <laughs> well, in, my case, in my case, logic. Case, well, did, yeah. did, I t- did I tell you about when I bought the car? No, I joked saying that was a three thousand dollars Boston CD with a free Volkswagen because uh, the owner left the Boston CD and it's like the first one, so it's like you know the quintessential nineteen seventy six stoner rock masterpiece. Of course, uh, you know long before Brad <clears throat> Delp did what he did to himself. Yeek. That's rough. Yeah. Brad Delp is dead because of at his own hand. He was a great singer too, just a bright, just beautiful voice. Yeah, I, but I can't make those noises. I can a couple times, but not <laughs> yes, comfortably. I'm, I'm good to do the darknesses. I believe in a thing called Levitt Karaoke once a season, and uh, I can't stack those. <laughs> but you, but you, but but you, but you know the song. This oh, is yeah. absurdly high oh, yeah. note. Like I, I could do that. So uh, right now I could do it once this year if, uh, <laughs> if anyone will have me. I can do a really high sustained uh, vocal note, but it's the mid to high range that I have a lot of trouble with. And it's really – it's kind of frustrating to it's be like honest. But, getting uh, there, like the transition between the notes? It's not the transition. It's just that mid to high yeah. tenor part. Like the very high, I can do the very high – Fairly comfortably, but it's all head voice. It's not chest voice. Right, right. But as true as the mic. But it's like that mid to high. I'm trying to think of an artist that I have trouble. Um, a lot of female artists I'll have trouble covering, but then like the Chris Cornell whale, I can hit those notes okay. Gotcha. Like, which is w- really, really strange. But um, I thought it was more of a dolphin. I'm so glad you're here in person instead of on the phone. <laughs> well. <laughs> Try to delve the, into the, the evil. The evil looks back. Are worth it? Yes, <laughs> and with no delay. <laughs> uh, what? Let's do the news. <laughs> now I have. This has been the first time we've done news with a guest. Actually, it's pretty cool. Uh, Guinness has now introduced the first non-alcoholic Guinness, which isn't really that far fetched. Because I think it was called an actual loaf of bread. I was going to say, like, it's the only beer you can eat with a fork. <laughs> But I love Guinness, actually. I do too, and I think I think it's it's great if they do it. it I, but I think a lot of people forget Guinness is only like three and a half percent. Yeah, and, a half. Uh, like, and yeah. I remember seeing a billboard that it's a really dark Bud Light. It's, mm-hmm. Don't don't go there. <laughs> 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 it was uh, seeing a billboard. It's 125 calories per serving, and not on purpose. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, unfortunately, they did do away with the what anchovy guts as part of how the uh, black coloring came to be years ago. Oh, it is 4.2%. So I thought it was, it was in the threes for some reason. It was one of the few non-vegan beers yep. in its heyday. Mm-hmm. I, had, it, 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 I was not aware of that. Yeah, it has some kind of fishy. It's, it's whatever caused the black coloring. Since then, they found something else to achieve it. But it's interesting it's Like that hadn't been a vegan beer at the time. That Typically, you think beer. It's, it's made entire it's vegetables. Like a, of course, yeah. Unless it's not. <laughs> well, McDonald's had to change their fry uh, recipe because the secret the, how McDonald's fry because McDonald's always to me had the lard. best fucking fries. Of course, it yeah. wasn't lard. They put uh, there was some kind of um, beef seasoning powder that had actual like <laughs> beef product in it, and they would put that seasoning in with the salt. It's the like a ramen packet that they yeah, throw into the fryer. Yeah, well, I know <laughs> yeah. what I'm doing next time I get McDonald's <laughs> fuck fries. I'm putting my nuggets too. I don't fuck, care. Fuck yeah. I had a college. Why, why isn't everybody making beef nuggets? Oh, wait. Fuck it. Oh, Pork wait. nuggets would be better. Uh, wait. IKEA is. They're called meatballs. Never mind. Well, Let's beef is it. harder to get right. Pork is easy to get right. So I figured like the pork nuggets would be. Although I, I had this idea to do hush pup, like called pork puppies, where it's big hush puppies, but the inside is pulled pork barbecue, the outside is the cornbread, and then you dip it in like a, a sweet barbecue sauce. Oh my god. Yes. Does it sound great? Yeah. Pork puppies. Is anyone writing this down? What <laughs> I mean, we got it there, and we got it there. Uh, okay, good. Yeah, it's uh, it. being archived. Man. We got it into three beers. You can make them right fritters now. and throw some corn in there, some sweet corn. Fuck. You can have a whole meal Let's or in a fritter. fucking do it. Like, I like what are it. we waiting for? What am I doing with my life? I'm retired God damn, right I quit. Like, That's I'm it. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Turn the Jeep into a food, a food Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> the food jeep. I I could imagine 
a food truck styled out like a Jeep. Like that would be really easy to modify an old school school bus to look like a Wrangler. That would or just a big giant Wrangler. Yes, you, you could do a like a, a school uh, bus. And then, and then you know, it'd be it'd still be four wheel drive. I mean, yeah. all four wheels are in the back, but still. <laughs> Why not turn a school bus like a mini bus, like the the, the short bus, into like a, a food truck called the cafeteria? I'm gonna and, fil- and, I'm gonna like fil- serve through this. Yeah, serve like cap like. School good style, like a like, like a on hipster. the old like orange trays and stuff. Yeah, like, like a yeah. hipster ver like a hipster version, like with good food, not the you know. Yeah. Like, hey, it's chicken salad day. This tastes like mayonnaise and cat food. Like actual like good, you know, good food. Like I was a big hang up on food. chicken salad for the longest <laughs> until I had like a rotisserie chicken oh. chicken salad. Oh, like it's oh, food line. Like, it's food line does that. Uh, I was sort of introduced to Atlanta, so I think it was a Kroger then. But mm-hmm. yeah. Um, when you're using you know real food to make said salad, it's less awful. It it, it really is. Uh, there was something else I was gonna say. I already forgot it. Something else. Yeah. All right. Beat moving to it. Moving on. Uh, guys, Breckenridge Brewing of uh, Denver, Colorado. Colorado. Yes, yeah. I got it. Stereo. Hey, uh, have been been there, drank that before they sold out. Is giving a free twelve pack of their throwback pack to anybody turning 30 this year and by free i mean you have to send in a mail-in rebate with prepaid gift cards but still sounds anybody? like to me like they overproduced because of covid and now they don't know what to do with this beer send all the vanilla beer here yeah so it's what a if, it's a marketing spin what Here's your vanilla, coming, everyone gets a vanilla porter <laughs> what if creeping on 39 is the new 30 Just, i'll be 39 in like four days so i'll take it Oh shit! Oh, the, I, he, he's officially the oldest one we've had on here. Hey, how about that? Oh, uh, man. My, my, Only second to Steve. My, my <laughs> uh, this year, my birthday will once again be on Thanksgiving. He was nice. born on Thanksgiving. You know how hard it is to put candles in a turkey. <laughs> you can put them up a turkey, but then you can't light them. That's true. Unless they're M- um, M80s. <laughs> are you aware of how I treat my candles? Got to light them for both ends because that's Ooh. how I function. <laughs> mm, talk dirty to me, Steve. <laughs> All right. That well, sounds poisonous. It kind of is. Sink Gallon Brewery, the oldest microbrewery in Japan, has now turned rain damaged pears into a new pearweizen beer. So we have a new pandemic for 2021? I mean, what? No. Uh, no. Well, the Simpsons already did it. It was the Osaka virus then. <laughs> so this is proof that everything the Simpsons do becomes oh reality. That's true. For better or for worse. So this is it. This yeah, is This, this is, is going to be. Yeah. Uh, never mind, Osaka virus was the coronavirus, I don't know how Dosekis, whatever yeah. have you. Oh, suck I mean, it to me, Steve. <laughs> to be honest, every beer that I've had out of Japan is usually some kind n- of lager, right? Or very Just a very lager basic, yeah. right, yeah. just a very uh, not exciting beer. So. It is right. yeah. really light, clean drinking beer. Yeah. Like if, so uh, if they're Ichiban, doing something. And I, all, and I only drink it at Japanese restaurants, so I yeah. only have two of them because it's priced high. I think there's, what, it's a Sapporo, oh, there's wait, Ichiban, my, there's uh, Asahi, which is one Asahi, of my. Asahi, yeah. yeah. Wait, my, my Fighter Outlaw does love a Sapporo can, so I do have a They are out good, of that. and they're cheap yeah. for how big they are. And I like the can, and that's, too. It's, it's, I it's do too, yeah. sturdy. It's a really sturdy You know, and it's, yeah. nothing is that sturdy a can. Singtel bottles are sturdy. Yep. Like those are like Starbucks frappuccino level. Like yeah, th- we threw uh, one and of those. That up was in effectively the air. Chinese Heineken. We threw a Starbucks frappuccino bottle up in the air. Like I didn't like go as high as I could, but I like took it and swung it up, and it hit the ground and didn't fucking break on sidewalk. Jeez. So or did you ever have Lucky Buddha? Yeah, I like Lucky. Yes, I now tastes more like Singtown. It is, now yeah. t- tastes more like Heineken. Mm-hmm. Everything in a green bottle tastes about the fucking same, doesn't uh, it? Much. <laughs> not Yingling. Yingling's green. Yes, it's been forever since I've had a Yingling. Um, and they also have an Oktoberfest out, which <laughs> for I would imagine tastes like this. But this is good. Y'all need to get on this. You're, you're already out, <laughs> Steve. Just, we're, we got to get on. Hi, Steve's are you out too? Um, not yet. Not Dude, it. Uh, I want to do some I, wine, I'm in, a, I'm in a much better mood since I don't have to work tomorrow. Yes. Uh, never mind. It took 30 <laughs> sacrificial lambs to do so. Uh, <laughs> what, there was a confirmed case uh, positive. So about an entire department was missing today. Here so, uh, the they had COVID, COVID Carvana. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> 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 That's it, right?
write that down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ryan Reynolds. You're a pal. <laughs> it's Brian Reynolds, okay? Brian Reynolds. Brian Reynolds. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> His handsomer, less Canadian brother. That's right. Yes. <laughs> That's it. Ever seen a proposal? It's like it's him and Sandra Bullock. I've actually seen that multiple they times. Are, to be I've honest. never seen it. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like The Devil Wears Prada, mm-hmm. only uh, hopefully not the band. <laughs> no, Ugh. the the movie. Okay. Only uh, this time it's going to be Ryan Reynolds as Anne Hathaway. <laughs> And Sandra Bullock as Meryl Streep. That's mm. very accurate. And uh, they're attempting mm. to get married because her Canadian visa has expired. Yeah. Okay. I and, need to, so uh, I need to watch this. It for being a chick flick, it doesn't suck. And Sandra Agreed. Bullock's in it, and I yeah, would watch. It, I would watch her like read. read. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> read much, the phone yeah. book. Same with Ryan Reynolds. If I can be yeah. honest. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, look. I'm. I'm not gay, but I wouldn't kick him out of the bed unless he wanted to fuck on the floor. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> <laughs> Would you hold it in your mouth till it went soft? <laughs> uh, good looking guy, like probably best looking guy I, I can think of, like right now. That's I don't think I could think of a of a of a better one to be I honest. Don't think Off so. the top of my head, it, him or uh, Timothy Oliphant when he was on The Office. That's a handsome devil right there too. There you have it, folks. Man crushes on the cars. Man crush the Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I really like uh, really no, yeah, like yeah, it, this. I do too. What's the proof on that? Better alliteration. Fellow Crush Friday on okay. ninety point four CBG pod. Oh. It, it's on the. I mean, the average end of, of bourbon. I just wish it was queer so I could get chicks. Wait, got a good one. <laughs> so <laughs> all bets are off. Are we gonna crack open the wine? We can. Please crack open the wine while I go over the next one. Go Stick for the, the trifecta uh, of whiskey, beer, and I'm wine. Oh, I don't have any more to be except towel, for the Halloween party. Um, because these, these do bleed a bit. Uh, I have a new, clean, microfiber towel instead of the one that was so stiff that it would it could stand up on its own. <laughs> Just for you, buddy. Excellent. Sticking with Japan, uh, Japanese craft breweries are turning their unsold beer into what liquor? Sake. No. You would think so, but no. Clean it up and make vodka? You got you got close. Gin. Ooh, Gin. Dude, okay. Suntory Gin so is awesome. Does it add some botanicals to it and you're good? I, I yeah. guess, but I didn't uh, know you could make gin out of beer. I didn't know how so you I, made gin, but uh, it's effectively <clears throat> uh, vodka plus flavoring. <laughs> okay, so that makes sense then. Yeah. Um, okay. That, that said, uh, if you like IPAs, you're going to like a gin and tonic. <clears throat> it, it took me a long time to discover this, and uh, that's my go-to now. Uh, uh, Steve and I had Negronis on, I guess about There's eight a couple, a couple episodes ago that brought the supplies to do so, and they're. Awesome. Yeah, it was. Re- have you had a Negroni before? I, I have, but I'm I'm not typically a gin drinker, so it's one of those things where when I do have it from time to time, I'm like, you know what, that's pretty good. But it's not something I typically go for myself. I got you. I'm, 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 I was a twist cap. <laughs> that's classy. It's, it is yeah, convenient. And delicious. My dad used to tell me that, uh, like, when I was in high school, we we would go when I played AAU basketball. We would have like you know chats on the you know on the road, and we were talking. He, he said, uh, he goes, son, if anybody ever tries to sell you like really expensive wine, he goes, don't taste it. He said, don't buy it. He goes, if they give it to you, just you know you can drink it. But he said it tastes tastes like really expensive vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he goes, cheap wine's the best wine. You're going to like this grape juice. Okay. Give me a glass. And you went right into the bourbon glass, too, even though I gave you a nice, fancy... <laughs> Over your tablet. That's brave. The stakes are low. He, but, desper- it, he desperately wants a new one. G- yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I've replaced the laptop and the phone, so the tablet's next. Yes, I got a new phone today. Oh, nice. I Apple? The, yeah, the 12. How is it? Uh, so far, I really like it. I've, had it I've been like using 11s at work, and uh, despite being an iPhone, it's totally okay. But we're, we're, we're kind of Android. I know you guys are both Android guys, right? Yeah. It's all um, open source. You guys are hackers, all that kind of shit. Yeah. I, I know Angelina Jolie. 
<laughs> Wait. <laughs> uh, I, I've got a 64 gig phone that I could just drop a 256 gig card in and be done, and then it's not 400 bucks for the kit. <laughs> uh, and, and it's bomb proof, waterproof, dust proof. I can swap the battery, and it still has a headphone jack. What the hell, Samsung? <laughs> Nice. It's a 2020 model that has all these features on it. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair and enough. you know what? Now it looks even more like a phone. Yeah. Complete with. You want to see what mine looks like? Screen. Yeah, yours is. So that's the 12, <clears throat> and you have a bigger screen than I do, right? This is. Uh, yeah. Th- this that's is a cool looking chick on th- your home screen. You should marry her. I probably should. You yeah, probably should. After all these years, I, I mean, probably marry her. You got to shed or get off the pot, man. <laughs> That's my best, my favorite picture I ever have of her, <laughs> and it's we're at a restaurant in Chicago. It was our, on our fifth anniversary. Send you, but it can't take you. Yeah, and um, this balloon was an edible balloon. So Pardon? They, <laughs> yeah, that I don't know if you it can. blanked out. Um, so that was one of the dessert, and it was an an edible balloon. Is it made of chewing gum? How, how does that work? It's like blown up. It's, it's like sugar and like blown up sugar, but it has helium in it. I was so. going to say, it had to have helium in it yeah, or else so it would just fall down. We both get these balloons, and we were the first table oh, in the room to get to this course. It was kind of like one of those multi-tasting course-type dinners. And um, they hand me the they hand us the balloon, and I, I started eating it, and it blows up on my face, obviously. <laughs> so I have all this sugar in my beard. And then I start laughing, and I'm laughing like a chipmunk because, <laughs> because of the helium. It. So everyone starts cracking up. That's and, fantastic. And it, so Paige is holding her balloon, and she's cracking up. And that's like the most genuine so, smile I've ever like captured of her. And it, it's like my favorite picture of her impromptu, ever. Impromptu things like that are way better than anything that's ever been planned. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Steve, uh, wind me while I read the last one. Uh-huh. Um, not as much as you gave yourself, which is already empty. Yikes. <laughs> Steve's here to party tonight. Uh, might want to slow it down. We got several more hours to go. Yeah, that'll work. How is it? How was it, Steve? <laughs> uh, just go, go ahead. Enjoy the sangria. I can do wine like that. That's actually really good. That's do you, actually. Do you normally you know, drink wine or no? No, I don't like. I don't like reds well, because they're too spit sucking. It's just it's just, just very dry. Drink. Yeah, that's red, really good. Red blend is such a vague term, though. Th- this is advertised as being sweet. Pour, pour and Brian a little bit of that, like a little bit of that. I went and got him, so he doesn't have to drive anywhere. Oh yeah, I'm good to go. Oh yeah, he's. he's I'll drink whatever you put in front of my face. <clears throat> Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> In a glass, anyway. Um, hey, you, you have you have uh, Glenn, um, a Glen Cairn glass, right? I do. Yes. Okay. I I thought it was uh, bullshit I, that it didn't taste or smell different, but you actually can. It, it actually does make it better. I, I, I've had a lot of nights and day. <clears throat> I should be all right. <laughs> ah, yeah. That's actually and, really and, good for cheap wine. And, and it's, that's like not and even it, wine. That's, <laughs> it, it's, it is. It's a fruit juice. What? <laughs> it's fruit juice. What is it? Does well, it like even I have said, like, this, liquor in it? What is it? This might as well be sangria. It's what is the ABV? Yeah. Uh, I got guess, some ice for this? I'm going to guess 12. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all right. I, I apologize. This did send a hot car all day, but what can we do? Um, <laughs> We're drinking hot car boxed wait wine. Wait a minute. Okay. It's nine percent. It's practically sangria. It, it is sangria, <laughs> but it's re- it's sang- pretty fucking good. 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 I'm not gonna lie. Delicious. You throw that over some ginger ale and some ice, and I would drink yes. the shit out of this uh, all yeah. day long. Have you had Blenheim? No. Uh, have you had Reeds? Yes. It's a stronger Reeds, like, like really zingy <laughs> yeah. type, or hell, even whatever. Ha- Should I boiler maker a wine? <laughs> <laughs> the, the maple flavor is gonna be a little strange, <laughs> but do what you want. I can't even call that wine. I don't know. Uh, it's delicious. Don't get me wrong. Spi- yeah. Spiked grape juice. Like that's, it's, that's, that's what it is. Th- this, yeah. Yeah. All right. Figure it out. It, it's effectively <laughs> Moscato mixed with sangria. That's the red that's blend it. we have here. Moscato. <laughs> Sangato. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's 11 bucks for this box. It's <laughs> that's a, like you that. couldn't get. That's a cheap get, date. That's a cheap date. You couldn't get more fucked up on $11 no. than drinking that. Um, unless you just went and got like a handle of. Unless you get getting Mad Dog or, or no, vodka. Uh, no, unless Night you, Train or something. No, yeah. unless you get the Merlot. Or the cab, which will come in heavier. Fuck that. Those would be 
drier but stronger. I don't want to be really drunk and then not only dehydrated but also want to drink more water. Like <laughs> at least beer will hydrate you a little. Like uh, I don't. Kalen's made me a red wine aficionado. Does so it make at least you like feel the hang of so it. fine? Um, you hate that song, don't you? Yes, it really. I really <laughs> still do. Everybody does. But yeah. I, I appreciate the sentiment, but. Uh, you know, I I not be forty for another thirteen months. Thank you very much. <laughs> Last but not least, for the fourth straight year, how's that beer feel coming out your nose? It's fantastic. For the fourth straight year, this beer has been named the best beer from America. Four straight years: seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Now this year, Bell's too hearted. God damn it, he got it. <laughs> not stone, arrogant bastard. Come on. Um, and you know, to be honest, I can't even be mad about it. it no, it's it, good. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, the, the whole uh, it's solid innovation mm-hmm. fiasco is long over, right, guys? Yeah, and he, I'm not sure that Brian knew about uh, about the lawsuit from a. Uh, they, they were in Silva, right? Yeah. Silva, North I, Carolina? I think they still are. They, 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 are, they have like, another tap room. You know, if. If they if they've dealt with a presence, that doesn't suck. Uh, please enlighten. Yeah, fill me in. I don't know what's going on. Uh, apparently, Innovation Brewing and Bell's mm. Brewing had butted heads over the use of the word innovation in their nomenclature and or branding and or you know the name of the fucking brewery. Circa twenty fourteen. Yeah, thirteen or fourteen. Uh, Bell's is brewing right. innovation uh-huh. since 2000. True. Uh, I, know 19, I know that slogan. 19, yeah, I know that 1985. Slogan. Yeah. 85. Yeah. Okay, one year before uh, I was born. It's like, what's next? They're going to sue Nissan for saying something about driving innovation, and uh, I've seen a lot of products. No, they're not. Have you seen a 2019 Frontier? Woof. It looks more like a 1998 Frontier. But I want the new Z, so we can talk <laughs> about that later. Yeah, that, that said, my favorite Frontier is the Suzuki Equator. Mine's the final. <laughs> I will say, if you're going to protect trademarks, you know, make it over specific beer names, maybe. Yeah, yeah. but not just I, your slogan. Yeah, I don't words. think anybody. Not just words. It yeah. got thrown out. The, the lawsuit got thrown okay, out. Okay, good. Nobody is mistaking a Bell's Brew, correct, for Innovation Brewing in North Carolina. Like, correct. Because you can, and find that's also kind of the big guy picking on a little guy, and I don't like that either. Yeah, fucking that's is. Like, right. messed up. Nobody, nobody that drinks Bell's too hard, it is going to drink. They're going to see a, a label that says innovation, and I'm pretty sure they're not going to immediately go. I bet that's a Bell's beer. Yeah, right. um, that, you, it's not. You like can't you make see, that connection, which I guess is no. why it got thrown out. So yeah, it's good. yeah, yeah, it, it got thrown out. It's not like you see Bell's advertising mm. on right. the TV at all. Uh, no, like the only. Remotely crafty thing you see on TV is Sam Adams, and right. that's awfully big for their bridges. They do good product, sure they're cherry wheat. Ha! I like cherry wheat. <laughs> More for you. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my first legal six pa- or probably either first legal six packs or last illegal six packs was the cherry wheat, and hated it. Oh my god! And still hate it. I would rather have cherry Nyquil. Dude, we need to make Wait, a six. It is stronger. We need to make a six-piece band called the Illegal Six Packs. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> be fantastic. Uh, technically, it'd be the underage Six Packs, but then that sounds a little. That's too, a whole different demographic. Uh, we don't want to do that. Yeah. Mm. No, 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 we don't. No, <laughs> no, we don't. You know why, and you know why. Moving on, guys. I'm I, a liar, a liar, a liar. I think we should do. Well, that's all for the news today. So I think we should do. More car shit first, because there is a new king of the hill, and I don't mean anything about propane. Damn it, Bobby. You get 1,700 horsepower out of propane in that car, man. <laughs> that sounded more like Boomhauer, but... Good. <laughs> <laughs> That's how little oh, sure, I care sure for or know. watch that show, I don't, man. Do a, I don't do a good... Well, boy, right, I, I, don't do, I don't do a good... That boy ain't right. We live in the center of whole lives of cats out of the park, man. Hank. No, I don't no. do a good any... I did my 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 or SpongeBob and Family Guy my impressions, <laughs> but not not so oh, much that. No 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 no, Peter, you only gonna get seventeen hundred horsepower out of that car. <laughs> get your fat ass back here. <laughs> get your fat ass. Get <laughs> the whistle. That's still the funniest thing ever. Takes talent. No, it took me a whole day of like fucking with my tongue to get it right. <laughs> Reminds me of my honeymoon. <laughs> 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 oh man! 
Is uh, that your favorite Billy Idol song? I was fucking with my tongue. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's a nice day for a white wedding. It's going to cost you lots of money, money. Ride your pony. Come on, Jessica. Ride the pony. <laughs> <laughs> what have uh, I done? <laughs> all right. So post-1945, which is the only era that matters, uh, fuck you baby boomers, not you, Dad. This list is going to compose, or we're going to go through, I, th- I think we sh- what, what I thought the idea would be is to go through, like, the, the fastest production car, like, the stock, fastest production stock car in the world from the time when cars were made to go fast. Like, so, the, of course, the Model T was the fastest one, but... Sure. So... Because it existed. <coughs> because it was faster than it, the is horse that carriage. Or, or the early horseless carriage. Yeah. But, to be honest with you, this list has 1894, the Benz Velo, the first ever production car, with one and a half brake horsepower, had a top speed of 12 miles per hour. And that wasn't... That wasn't beat, it says, until 1949. What? I think that's a lie, that's but I don't think they measured it because there was so much shit going on in the world. Yeah. So let's yeah, just two start. Two wars. <laughs> yeah, I guess the World Wars and the Depression kind of derailed flu. everything. Yeah. yeah um, have you heard of a Packard? <laughs> yeah, they're the have Green you, Bay football ha- team. Have you heard of a Cord? <laughs> Green Bay Packards. <laughs> So we're going to start in 1949. I don't care about football, but I do appreciate that is the only community-supported team versus a corporate-backed team. Mm-hmm. It is. Fair. Publicly Absolutely traded. Fair. Yep. Yep. So in 1949, the Jaguar XK120 was the fastest production car in the world. It achieved 124.6 miles per hour out of its 210 cubic inch in line six. It produced 160 horsepower. Meanwhile, I'm... 20 off that figure in the current car. And you would absolutely horsepower. trounce it <laughs> in a straight line. Uh, I do remember what that car looks like. It's uh, Think of a very plebeian E-type Jag with a convertible. They did build E-type convertibles, by the way. Yeah, and uh, sh- it's, they don't know that. Yeah. Uh, Bested in 1955 by the Mercedes Benz 300 SL. The Gullwing. The Gullwing. That's such no. Gullwing was not in 55. No, oh, it wasn't 55. No, Steve. I remember hearing that mm. was the fastest car at the time. I had no idea. I'm and for being now something 60 plus years old, it's still a very well assembled thing. But <clears throat> if it's not air conditioned. You're going to roast in that greenhouse. I had no idea that was fifty. I thought that was sixties. I honestly thought it was sixties. Uh, you, you know, Brian, do you remember what the SL looks like? The Goldwing, the original I don't one. No. Now, if I saw a picture, I might recognize it'll, it. It'll it'll jar your memory. You guys memory. spit out just years and models. I'm not. I'm not that good. Well, the thing is, they keep using the same nomenclature. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You remember that one? I, yes. I could have sworn that was sixties, but. Could you imagine what that kind thing? Of I mean, that that in the fifties that that's pretty ahead of its time. That's pretty. Yeah. Somebody getting out that's of that pretty huge you, right you there. M- you might as well be getting out of a spaceship right Basically, now. Basically, yeah. That would be. Like you just drove a shuttle. To well, the, well, the thing yeah. is, like, well, <laughs> you have that <clears throat> concurrent with a fifty-five Chevy, mm-hmm. styling wise, which different both, generation, both I mean, knockout, exactly, decades. exactly like, the same yeah. year. And yeah, but you know, I like style, styling wise, they're both beautiful. But yeah, way the Mercedes holds up way better <coughs> yeah. than the said Chev does without a lot of work. Uh, bested four years later by the Aston Martin DB4 GT, 152 Which miles per hour. Looked an awful <laughs> lot like a five and a Still six. Pretty. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, well, it, it wasn't until the seven that the DBs looked quite different and then continued to look very similar. And I think me and you have talked about this, AJ, but... The styling of an Aston Martin is just, it's timeless. It, it is. To me. It, I mean, I just. E- even the 80s Laganda? I like the Laganda. Rawr, rawr. I'd have to, I'd have to <laughs> look, I don't, I don't count anything from the 80s because the 80s were just terrible. Or uh, the the 70s, 80s Vantage. That is the Ford Mustang, only anglicized. <laughs> I'd have to see it. Hold on. Well, like uh, did you ever see uh, the first Dalton Bond? Uh, no. That's the Laganda. Well, I mean, that just looks like a 
ugly ass eighties car. And now they but go that's for like two hundred thousand dollars. It, yeah, it, that's what it, all cars it, in the eighties look like. It still looks like a suitcase. Yeah, it's like, I like it. Like I, I would be happier with an eighty eight Accord. Than Agreed. that thing. Agreed. Well, when you had yeah. to buy any kind of part for it, absolutely. I think the Ooh. 80s destroyed a lot of things, not cars and music. I just, I don't like the so, 80s. You know what's funny? Some uh, of the music, I've, like, they were I've really talented bands. I some goodies bands. out of the 80s. It's just, they didn't get the exposure. What made it to radio, what you've been hit with so hard, so long, yeah, you'll get sick of in a hurry. But yeah. there, there is good stuff yeah. out there, but... That's three bucks. It didn't make it... You gotta find it, huh? Cheeky. <laughs> Bested in 1959. Wait, more. All right. The Iso Grifo GL365 is now the fastest car in 1965. Italian car with a Chrysler motor. I will say, what is that? Is that uh, Italian it's, sounds? Uh, yeah, and it's a lovely thing. Quite nice, actually. That That's that, pretty. That basically follows the tradition of the <clears throat> Vassel Vega and predates the Pantera to have European car with American muzzle. Not only that, but it was the first car on the list that has a V8. The Aston had an inline six with 302 horsepower. This one has a 5.4 liter V8 with 360 horsepower. And that's in 59? 59. That's a monster for 59. Yeah. Was that the first V8? That's I mean, it was pretty. the first. I mean, oh, no, that's that's pretty. I like that. That's really pretty. The thing is. It kind of reminds me of an old school vet. Yeah. Oh, it does. That it really hood. does. Yeah. Yeah. C3. Um,. Old cars are cool to look at, but unless you drive a resto mod, driving an old car is a fucking nightmare. Of course. <laughs> it really fucking is. Like, y- Th- this is the V8 mm. Vantage. Wait, it, it went stupid. Mm. It, it's gonna. It's easier for you to do Well, no, if I ever had a classic car, it'd be a resto mod. Oh, my like, God, it'd be so great. Yeah. yeah. If you want to drive it, if I you want to collect it, sure. you want the original. Sure. But if you want to drive the fucking thing. British Mustang. Wow. Let me say that again. It is. It's like a British yep. Eleanor almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually kind of kind of dig that, but styling it, it, it's it's gorgeous. But like it. It, it it commands an even higher premium than a '60s Mustang would. I could see that because it they built twelve of them. <laughs> oh my God! Jesus <laughs> Christ! Okay, uh, okay, one hundred one hundred twenty of them, but still, but it, still, it was early Astons in limited numbers and my production figures are going to be way off but four butts but but <laughs> however isn't as fun hmm. depends on how you say it 65 two years after the isogrifo was the AC Cobra 427 a 427 cubic inch V8 putting out 485 horsepower. Wait, you're a little tiny two seater. Wait, you're saying something one, from Shelby. One hundred, yes, foreshadowing. For uh, went 165 miles per hour in 1965. Remember the tale of when that car debuted. Mm-mm. Uh, Carol Shelby took it from town to town and would repaint it because he he only had the one car. <laughs> And that was before vinyl wrap was the thing too. <laughs> so uh, by by the end of it, the car had you know twelve layers of paint. Dude, people don't realize how rare those cars. If you've ever seen one in person, you've seen a replica. Yeah, yeah. You haven't the, seen the real one. The real ones are absurdly expensive. Like that was an early million dollar car. It's like seeing the Mona Lisa. You've never actually seen the Mona Lisa unless you've <laughs> gone anyone, to the Louvre. Uh, and even that, then, are you even? And you know, are you even positive? This big. Well, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I've seen replicas that, to me, I could say was the Mona Lisa. I mean, how do how do I know? So, oh. is that even something they truly display anymore? Uh, yeah, I, I think saw, it's still. I saw the Mona Lisa, but that was a different medium. <laughs> oh. That was uh, much more of a video than a <laughs> portrait. Uh, bested two years later by the car I think is the most beautiful car ever built. Ever. The Get 40? No. 1967 Lamborghini Miura. Uh, oh. 3.9 liter V12. 350 Did you ever see the Miura's so We, we went from like a thing. 6 to an 8 to a 12. Like, mm-hmm. very fast. Yes. Let me see. It. And it was the Italians I brought up the 8, right? And now they're, now they're pushing a 12? Yeah. The Miura, to me, that is the most beautiful car ever built. I love it. There's no... Show me a picture. I want to see it. It's no Halpa. 
Oh, yeah. It's so pretty. And think about how radical that was to it that year. Jesus, Just how man. Like, did, did you talk ever see, about a spaceship? Did you ever yeah. see the ones at Cars and Coffee years ago? No, I've never seen a Miura in person. Uh, I've got photographic evidence that they were at CNC back in the day. And <sighs> I saw it. I, I think. haven't been to one, the, the orange one. Yeah. And I think it was, well, I mean, obviously not this year, but I think it was last year. I don't know if it's a replica or what. I don't know what the what the story is behind it, but regardless, it's yeah ridiculous. Sweet when, fear, bro. Yeah. When they uh, <laughs> that'd be the day if like people oh are God, I would run them over. If someone's modifying a Fiero to look like that, it's like <clears throat> the, uh, the the less intricate cars seem to make a bit more sense. Yeah, they they had the pillarless. Uh, doors so that when you open both doors, it looked like a bull. Oh, because awesome. Lambo, like every <laughs> so awesome. Lamborghini yeah. is named like well, after at least when they a bull were, or bull fighter. At least when Lambo used, you know, <laughs> named a set of numbers. Mm-hmm. Never mind, it becomes the model and then a bunch of bleeding and blah blah. That was the side profile, and it was uh, engineered to look like that because that's the exact shape of an airplane wing. Well, think about – you could probably lay a 1,000 cars over that graphic mm-hmm. and have pretty close to the basic shape. It may Like, be. that was to the point of groundbreaking right mm-hmm. there. Like, but could you imagine in the 60s, like, every other, like, U.S. barge of huge – and then that just sleeked. Yeah. <laughs> so then how do we get to the 80s? That's what <sighs> makes me so angry. Because then you get to the – Gas 80s. crisis. Because <laughs> they didn't get the they had to engineer it well, to get fifty MPG instead of look good. Yeah, uh, but well, the all beauty of just went out the window. Mm-hmm. Fuel mileage and safety, like airbags, were still in their infancy and not mandated yet. Mm-hmm. But cars that could simply crash better, hence the you know diving board bumpers you got on BMWs or the DeLorean with its tractor suspension. Yep. To meet federal crash requirements, I guess that's a good point. Did they even have crash requirements back then? Did they uh, have it star ratings? Did they have? It wasn't until late seventies, early eighties okay. that crash requirements became a thing. Uh, emissions requirements came on the scene seventy two, seventy three. Yeah. Got more stringent by eighty, and then you know as time got time's gone on that's why his jeep's engine to my vibes engine had to go away because of emissions bio six which is a shame so as an engineer right you're you're handcuffed a lot yeah versus what these guys but my wrangler has a three-star crash rating (laughs) and that big old moose you only have three stars three you should be able to run over anything the doors are the doors come off There's so that. The, it's yeah. cumulative. Uh, from the front and the rear, you're fucking Everything safe. Just, if your yeah. doors are off and you get plowed into by you're, something, you're, you're probably going to fucking die. Yeah, you're toast. <laughs> Even so with that, the doors on, you're probably going to fucking die. So I'll take my chances. I've never been T-boned. So far, so good. Uh, As a consumer, does does any of that stuff I don't change your shopping habits? Have you seen how many Wranglers there are, though? Well, exactly. Yeah, I don't so. think it does. I, I really you could ask me right now, what is the crash rating of the Super and I, I, it could be one. I don't think it like, is. That's not uh, why I no, got I the think star. Th- like, the that's fact, not even why I got the well, star. Well, the though. fact it's, you know. Don't plan on crashing it. I, well, I got a well, feeling that's, that. <laughs> that's how what I buy a car saying I'm not going to crash this car. Cra- I'm going to crash do, that one. Do, I don't want to buy that yeah. one. Do you know which nation your car is built in? Mine came off the boat from Japan, yeah. Not Austria? I think, no. They BMW I shipped the engine think to mine was, yeah. I think mine came Japan. from Japan. I think it was literally that. a Okay, because I remember hearing like they had been built in Austria since it's a collaborative effort and whatever have you. Oof. I'd have to check. Um, I'm sure it's on my sticker, but right? I, I think probably, or if... I'm on it. If your VIN starts with a W, it's Germany. If the, it starts with a J, it's Japan. The very and first... I have, couldn't tell you what an Austrian VIN starts with. It's in Austria. The very first 2020 Supra has rolled off the production line at the Magnusterer print plant in Graz, Austria. Good yeah. news, it's from Arnold Schwarzenegger's homeland. Bad news, it's from Funny Mustache Man that is not Charlie Chaplin's homeland. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. 
But I've I've had it, the two. even stranger ones I've seen have been the uh, Ford Transit Connect are from Turkey, and Turkey, the really? uh, uh, domestically available Toyota Yaris <clears throat> is built in France. I've had four cars off the boat, like built in another country, not assembled over here, but um, actually built. You guys go through it. I'm gonna get me another burger. Yeah, had. American GTI, Mexican GTI, two Swedish Volvos. My current Toyota ish is Japanese. Three Kentucky, no, one Kentucky Toyota, two California Toyotas, the California Pontiac, probably Japanese initial 87 pick em up. Uh, that Chevy bomb. <laughs> that Chevy bomb was from, I don't know, Detroit, maybe. Uh, what else is there? Well, the the Evo was built in Japan, in Japan, wasn't it? Or was it assembled over here? Do you remember? It's been a while, but I don't. I would think the Evo was, but I'm pretty uh, the suit the, the WRXs might have been assembled over here. And whatever Subaru, that wouldn't then, surprise me. Yeah, I, but a Honda, I like every Honda, but the NSX and the S two thousand, like, <laughs> and the TSX was actually assembled in Japan. Wow, I think it was, but like a lot, most Honda, like a lot of Japanese car makers, they, they assemble them in the U S well, even BMW, like either yeah. the, all their X fives are in South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Everything oh. comes out of South Carolina. That's where, so. uh, or at the, actually the cars and co- evidently the cars and coffee at the Michelin plant in South Carolina is uh, it's evidently be like insane, right? 2,500 cars. Oh my God. Uh, so I want to nice. go, I don't have a car that's like worthy of taking anymore. How far away is that? Two hours, two hours and a half. Oh, that's nothing. Yeah, it's, Halfway between here and Atlanta, it, it's, That's not bet- bad, it's between Greenville and Spartanburg. I'll have they plants in Greer, which is a yeah. town between the two. So I've had a show there. You could, if they'll claim Greenville or Spartanburg, I think Greenville's the larger of the two. But mm-hmm. the two of those are two of South Carolina's larger cities. I mean, my uncle lives down there, so it's an excuse to go down yeah, there. Yeah, it, it's it's evidently like a huge cars and coffee, and yeah. yeah, if you make it to Clemson, you went too far. <clears throat> I thought about going because I'll have the loudest Wrangler that doesn't include tire noise. Yeah, you'll you'll drive right by people and they won't even realize it's you. They'll be like, "Not this stock Wrangler." Like, what the fuck? Like this guy doesn't even have like <laughs> halos on his headlights. I'm like, who is this guy? Or uh, you don't have the or black. teeth on the grill. God, it's that's awesome. fucking yeah, horrible. Yeah, the the Darth Vader <laughs> grill is the scourge. That's horrible. Uh, you haven't lived until you see an angry renegade, though. Ooh. Ugh. Yuck. <laughs> I just died a little bit. Thanks, Steve. You need You're more welcome. booze. Duh. Uh, I got booze. Uh, I'm drinking a uh, KBS now. Nice. Excellent. Uh, I'm uh, going to I internet. I also brought some. All right. Yep. Hey. If you guys want. He said he brought a couple bombers. I got some bombers. <clears throat> so we have to rent some of this out. Okay. Um, so we don't I, have to do it now since you just opened the KBS. But. I know what I'm about. <laughs> 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 I'm going to rinse this. I'm going to rinse all the wine glasses out. So you, you go through the all bombers right. and tell everybody what we got. All right. So I'll give you. So I have two choices. The first one. Mm-hmm. It's called Criminal Commission, and I'm a big fan of Cigar City. So this is a rum barrel aged imperial stout with banana, vanilla, and cinnamon. So I don't know if if you have an off. Is there something there you don't like? Banana, s- vanilla, or cinnamon? Uh, this sounds like dessert. <laughs> Good to know. And then probably my favorite one that I brought is called Alam's Imperial Stout. And this is also a Cigar City. This is a Hunapu variant. And this one is... You said Hooniverse or Hoonigan awful funny. <laughs> uh, so this is basically a Hunapu, which is a cinnamon, vanilla, cacao, chili peppers. But this one is aged on cedar. Oh, my. On Spanish cedar. So it's very, very sexy. Si, si senor. So... AJ, I'll, t- I'll tell you in, uh, in the, case you have a. Do you like banana, vanilla, and cinnamon? Yeah. Yes. Okay. We'll, <laughs> s- we'll start with that. <clears throat> that sounds amazing. Is that a Cigar City? Of course. Because Cigar City's from Tampa, Tampa. Bay. and you are basically from Tampa. <laughs> I am a 
And Admitted I, homer of Cigar City. I'll be honest. After looking at the area, and like I was looking, and there's breweries everywhere. I was like, Emily, what do you uh, what do you think about Florida? She's like, hurricanes. I'm like, well, it's hurricanes are easy. I was like, well, we have to deal with that shit here. Yeah. Also, uh, if you look at the map, they don't actually hit Florida. By well, the way. oh, particularly Tampa. Like, yeah. Well, here's y- the th- usually Jacksonville's. Like, uh, I wouldn't mind Jacksonville. where they hit them. I yeah. wouldn't mind Jacksonville. Uh, just yeah. staff ninety five through there because that's the devil. Um, I wouldn't mind it. I just don't want to go any further south than Tampa because I actually want to be able to drive places. I want to be able to drive places. <laughs> if yeah. you're in Miami, it's great, and then you're like, "Oh, let's leave Miami." Oh, it's a, you're, you're flying. It, yeah, don't do that. Stay on, stay on the Gulf side. Yeah. yeah, and don't go any any further south than Sarasota. No, but I yeah. There's also no no state income tax down there, which is nice. I was looking at that. I was looking at Nevada. Um, Nevada. Yeah. I. I I don't know. Like, I don't think North Carolina is where I'm supposed to be. If that makes any, f- I'm, I'm not a believer in fate. Or it makes one thousand percent sense to me because I, you know, I moved up here for a job. It's been just over eight years, and um, at the time, you know, my wife now was just my girlfriend in Florida, and we were down there with family, um, and I somehow convinced her to come up, and we've been here, and and uh, we've enjoyed likes, our yeah. time here, of course, but it's just not. It's just not the same. Like I went, you know, we went back a couple of weeks ago for a wedding and I got to see all the guys I grew up with and all my friends. And it was like, we just really hated leaving. So yeah. that was kind of what prompted us to get the wheels moving on. All right, let's see if we can get back down here. So mm-hmm. I, I, I feel like I could see Steve living in Denver. Absolutely. Yeah. Which uh, Denver's. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I love Denver. I could do Denver. I need to be around a good beer scene. Not only because I have mild alcoholism, but because I'm a, I'm a musician too, and like yeah. I need places to play. Charlotte's a great place to play, but if I move anywhere, I'm gonna have to have somewhere to play music. And right. the thing is, I st- I want to do this forever, so I got to take Steve with me wherever I go. So that's another thing. I've Got to convince the misses of that, but that's semantics. Your misses <laughs> and my misses. <clears throat> uh, I don't know. Like it, it, I haven't seen enough of the United States to, to 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 say one way or another. I enjoyed my time in St. Augustine a lot. I'd like to visit Tampa. Yeah. Uh, but the St. Augustine Jacksonville area, I, I liked it. Yeah, and that's where I came from when I moved up to Charlotte, mm-hmm. and that's where my wife is from, and mm. we have family there, and we really like that area. Mm-hmm. Um, from a beach perspective and an environment perspective. If you've never been to the Gulf side of Florida, mm-hmm. and I'm not even saying like the Panhandle, a lot of people go to Destin and stuff, and that's very nice. Yeah, but if you go further south, Tampa, Sarasota, Bradenton, man, I need to be paradise. somewhere blue, not red. There you go. So yeah, <clears throat> Panhandle gets kind of red. Yeah, and yeah, because it's effectively Alabama, Alabama's extended coast. Right. Yeah, North Florida is is taking a lot of influence from. Florida is the only state that the further north you go, the further south you get. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. I went to school in Tallahassee at FSU, and it was – I mean, you're basically southern Georgia. Southern Holy Alabama. shit. That's delicious. That's amazing. Oh, my God. The the cinnamon's dominating um, it, and that's okay. That is absolutely okay. Um, we'll, we'll, get back, we'll get back to that in a second. But uh, the Miura – Held the crown from 1969 to 1982 when it was taken over by not a DeLorean, <laughs> another uh, <laughs> Italian, uh, faster Countach, Lamborghini Countach LP 500S, 4.7 liter, 375 horsepower V12. So nothing happened in the 70s, like just uh, gas crisis. Um, yeah, uh, gas, crisis, gas crisis, emissions. So you're not doing V12s. You're not doing V12s. No, well, the they they were V8s still were. doing V12s. It's just they were hindered. Yeah. Loops of But even major. after, Wait. even after, <laughs> with a V12, they're pulling out 375. Yeah, and it was a 4.7 liter V12. So you're still looking at what 80, very, very 80 horsepower per liter. Yeah, but I mean, and with but the, at the time though, like oh, all of right, course. so oh, you're groundbreaking. Oh, yeah, twenty percent shy with of hundred per. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then that held the crown till the very next year. By I would have never guessed this. Think of a better Porsche 911. A 928. 959. Wrong Wait. company. 
Gran Turismo. They couldn't have they couldn't have Porsches in Gran Turismo, Roof. but they could have RUFs. Uh, RUF BTR, nineteen eighty three. That always mm. baffled me that the roof was able to do that. Yeah, uh, apparently they re-engineered cars so much. Like, what the hell are these Porsches with different names? The Roof BTR had... A why, why is the yellow bird blue? So educate me on this, because I, I know Gran Turismo, the video game. And yeah, I know yeah, GT2 Porsche was when, never there. Uh, like, uh, not all until... Of, all of us heard of this five or six. in 1999. So did Ruff legitimately take Porsches and change them? Oh, I mean, that's them? the Ruff BTR. Well, exactly. That's a 911. It's, a 911. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's just, now it has a carbon body and thrice But it was power. not under the same umbrella. Like, you're talking it, they, they, they completely took, different. They, they wow. took 911s and made them murderers. Or think think about if SRT went, uh, here's our new car, the, the, the P970, and it looked just like a Viper. <laughs> But no, is it? No, it's not a Viper. It's a P97. Like, no, it's a fucking Viper. It's a Viper. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, quit. Yeah. But it hit 190 miles per hour Ooh. out of its turbocharged flat 3.3 liter flat six with th- only 369 horsepower. And what was the top speed of the last one? So that I feel like that was a pretty big jump. Uh, 182 to 190 with oh, no, uh, okay. with six less horsepower. But but that lighter was going to yeah, be no. lighter car. Yeah, um, they've rebodied the thing in its entirety, so it's Gunter Works before Gunter Works. It was Gunter Works or Shark Works or RTR. This is one of the best beers I've ever had. Oh, it's that good! Like that's very happy to hear that. Hey, you want to go to Tampa? Wait till you have the next one. You want to live in Tampa? At least when I move down there, you guys will have a connection. I can just oh, mail dude, you yeah. stuff. that's <laughs> I will uh, so I will cry. Well, when I you laid leave. off the uh, the Hagens are from there. <laughs> no I, I was there back in 06 for a wedding. It's like that, that was a fun time. Whatever the hell we did then, I, um, you know, before I got drunk, I would I would absolutely miss. I will cry when Brian's gone, but I will sign. Where do you think you while while Brian's gone? Before we keep going, where do you uh, where do you think you would live if you didn't live in North Carolina? Denver short list. Really? Yeah, totally. Is Kaylin okay with cold? She uh, seems like she would be. She's from upstate New York okay. and does not miss it. Oh. But at least in Denver, it's uh, 300 days of sunshine. It might be negative 12 out, but it's sunny. Well, As mentioned to me by tour guide or something when I was there five years ago, oh my Allah, has it been that long? Um, I like the Florida actually sounds nice. If you don't, if you stay away from the Florida man parts of Florida, uh huh. Like if you stay in the city parts, it's kind of like North Carolina. You stay yeah. in the, in, you stay it's in Charlotte, Asheville, Greensboro, Winston, Raleigh, Wilmington. Those areas are really nice. Yep. You go outside, it's not as nice. So you stay in Tampa, Jacksonville, Bradenton, Orlando, Tallahassee. Miami. I think Bradenton's where other Steve Nicks is from. Yeah, that's where he's going to move back to. So. That would get a strong consideration. Also, Vegas, because you're six hours from San Diego. You're seven hours from Denver. You're five hours from Phoenix. Want to go to Moab in Utah? That's another six or seven. Like, So you're pretty close to cool stuff. And then there's some microbrews in Vegas, too. And there's no income tax. Because you know me. I talked up San Diego for years, but I don't much want to pay. Cali remains expensive. Well, it does, and now every car has to be electric that's brand new, sold by 2030. And oh, that was 35. Maybe. And that's a bluff. But the the yeah. grid can't support it. it have, you, I, have you heard Ferris Rance on these? I like, have. They, he can't get a building powered properly, no. let alone his own cars. Yeah. No. This is amazing. This is <laughs> rad That's some next level shit right there. Uh, but I think Florida would actually. That wouldn't. That would get a strong consideration. You know, it, it sounds like a joke, but when you delve more into it, um, you know, I considered Savannah as well, mm-hmm. um, and then went there for my cousin's eldest daughter's graduation in May. Mm-hmm. Um, Savannah, cool beach, cool. That is surrounded by a bunch of dumb shits. 
as well yeah. as whatever place we were camped out at was was like these huts at a state park. Mm-hmm. The horse flies. Oh my god! What yeah. the fuck am I? Be- I'm being chased by this two inch blood sucking creature. The horse flies, the state bird of Georgia. You know, it was just <laughs> this dreadful thing. I I never see anything like this. Uh, like uh, it, it's like th- this is revenge for this having been a Confederate battleground <laughs> that is now a state park. They this, all came back as horse flies. Yeah, <laughs> Confederate, yes. conf- it, fallen it, like, Confederate yeah, soldiers. F- or, or, yeah, horse fall, fall, yeah. I mean, <laughs> have you ever been bitten by a horse fly? Uh, I mean, I've been by a Confederate soldier, yeah, so geez. I can imagine it's the same. <laughs> and those things get about an inch and a half long. So, yeah. uh, you've been to Savannah, haven't you? Yes. Savannah, everybody that asked me, what is Savannah like? I was like, it's like going to New Orleans, but it's closer, yeah. it's cheaper, and it's cleaner. And they were like, that sounds great. I'm like, Savannah is fucking amazing. Yeah. Yep. I've actually never been to New Orleans, though. I Both of us have. We yep. had wildly different experiences. Uh, but I, I had a lot of fun since I, I was there on Bachelor Hooligan trip, and he was there with him. Anniversary. Ooh, no. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it... If I was to ever to go it there, it was going to be... be it, it needed to be a stag party. Yeah, it was going to be need, like need, when FSU was in the Sugar Bowl and we were going to take a trip to New Orleans and it was going to be me and the boys yeah, and, and sweaty. And what, three hours down I-10? Exactly. Yeah. So but I, taking I, I went, Paige wait, there... We went, from, no, no. We, we went from Pensacola. Kalen has zero interest in going to New Orleans. Yeah. I'm glad I went, and I did have fun. I, I'm not going to lie. I did have fun, sure. but like I didn't... It was dirty. Every time we went down... Bourbon Street or anywhere near Bourbon Street, people would try to hustle you. Yep. They would get uh, down there, sh- spray your shoes. Hey, I'm going to clean these shoes up. 20 bucks. Give me 20 bucks. I'm Which like, I hate Will that. Will you fucking stop that? that? Like, no. Yeah, I, I, like my shirt, I like my shirt. These aren't shoes. shinable shoes. Uh, did, yeah. did you ever encounter what we called shot rape? Like, girl yep. walks up to you yep. with the, like little test tubes of whatever have you, yep. and yep. then you're responsible for her drink mm. and yours. Mm. Yep. No. Yeah, yeah. That sounds unless you're going to give me something out of it, and my wife's okay with it. Let's not do this transaction. Uh, yeah, can't, won't. Nah. I uh, feel like I'd have to be on guard the entire time, which I'm sure how you felt with him. Like uh, you, yeah. they, like you'd have to. I like the yeah the the yeah. buy one oh, get absolutely the yeah. buy one get two free beers were fun. Sure. Uh, I like by, the by the end of it, I wanted nothing to do with a beat of lager, though. I like because that was often the <laughs> special. But it's like yeah. four bucks for getting three beers. Why? Yes, yes, I will. You're all and it did a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it. all abitas. So uh, <laughs> it took a while because it's local thing. I mean, yeah. they're, they're would promote the local product. Like I'm a fan of Turbo Dog. Oh yeah, the Purple Haze. Mm. Take it or leave it. Um, the Abita IPA is pretty rad. Um, the Chapatulas, I can't spell it, but that was a better Noa beer, as well as the actual brewery Noa. Chapatulas. Nola, Nola Brewing. T C H. Make some good stuff. O P I T O U L A S. Chapatulas. You could throw in a Q and an X in there. I wouldn't care. Hey, look. I won the spelling bee and the geography bee the same fucking year when I was in seventh grade. I digress. <laughs> uh,. <laughs> and I die inside. <laughs> uh, it was. I like the tours the best. We did the we did ghost tours, and then we did the Katrina tour, and that was really eye opening. And by the way, super fucking scary because we're like, all right, we're in the lower ninth ward now, and uh, Domino's, Pizza Hut, anybody delivering any kind of food does not deliver here because they've had so many drivers killed. Oh my god! I was like, these doors lock on this bus, right? Like. Uh, and then that we drive through, and then um, they had Sir, the telephone. Sir, double decker bus. <laughs> they had the telephone poles, and they were like, "You see how the pole is different colors right there?" He goes, "Well, it changes color That's twenty-three your... feet. That's where the water was." Oh my! And you're God. like, Jesus! And they're, they're, and it's and they've it's, been hit like five times this year. I it, mean, it's it, like every single hurricane. It's eye opening because also you would go through these little shotgun house. You know what a shotgun house is? Yeah, yeah. So they would go shotgun houses, and some of the houses were still uninhabited. And we did this tour. We went to New Orleans in 2015, so it's five years ago. Uh, Katrina. That was ten years uh, post Katrina. That was uh, 2005. On the the house, they would 
uh, spray paint a circle. If they've searched your house, if the search and rescue people search your house, they would circle, they would spray a circle and an X. And right. this is, you can look it up, but this is a paraphrase and it's mostly accurate. They did the circle and an X, and in the top part of the X, they uh, they would put how many bodies they found. And at the bottom, they would find how many were alive. Yikes. And there were still circles painted on people's houses 10 years later. They have it. They have it. In, this, nothing's been there's done. There's nothing there. They're, it's it's depressing. I'm glad I did it. It's real, but it's I. It's just like this was all underwater, and like there's nothing done about any. And I and I know if you live in a giant hole, eventually it's going to fill up with water. But yeah, there's got to be something that could be done for all these people who mostly don't have a way out. I don't know. Give them all money to get get out. It's, like there's got give a, give them an option. There's got to be something. I mean, if everybody like, but sitting us, sitting in the in, in the bottom of the cereal bowl is not the right answer. None of us are rich, but if we all if everybody who wasn't rich gave one dollar, yeah, wouldn't that help a little bit? Like, yeah, like it, get get these people out. Give them an option. Yeah, there's no because could you imagine being? Could you imagine like if you had one kid or no kids? Uh, you had nobody left. You were eighty years old, and you're in your nursing home, and you're in the lower ninth ward. And there's uh, where do you fucking what do you what do, do? You do what do you do? There's nothing to fucking do. Nothing. There's, you can't do anything. Yeah. And it's really I, I I'm glad I did that part, and like the food was good. But if you want to visit New Orleans, do it as a party. Don't do it as like a Romeo history Kill. lesson. History lesson, because then yeah. you'll be kind of. I'm glad I did it, but no. I'm not gonna go back for a while unless it's like a big bachelor party. Uh, man, it. this is depressing. Let's go back to fucking fast cars. <laughs> <laughs> My birth year is 1986. 86 was a really big year for cars. What and was the fastest car then? 959. Nine. Porsche 959, 198 miles per hour out of its 2.8 liter turbo char- twin turboed flat six. Wow, so this was the first turbo, and they go down to a 2.8. Well, the the RUF was turbo flat six. It was but flat single six. turbo. Single turbo. This one was a twin turbo flat six with four hundred and forty four horsepower. But the RUF went how fast? So no one's crossed the two hundred ninety. No yeah. one's crossed the two hundred. Nobody's right? crossed the two hundred yet. So it's not for the next year. Wink, wink, wink. Actually, spoiler no. alert. No, nineteen eighty. Well, it was the next year, but it was not the Ferrari. It wasn't the the F forty. What? It was another RUF. The CTR. So they took the it, one that went 198. Uh, and you, <laughs> and AJ, it's okay. You can say roof. That's how they. It's roof. it's the guy's name. It is okay. Yeah, uh, I always said R U F. That was the smoking tire episode. They had Eloy's roof on the show, like the guy behind current roof and whatever wizardry they're doing. I'm happy. I have a roof over my head. Bingo. Uh, me and too. But it leaks. Yeah. Like I said, uh, I gotta give you the last. The, the, no, finish that. The, the, sure? vi- yeah, the vinyl yeah. cabin is made of Swiss cheese. Yeah, like it, this, it looks cool for being '80s house, but it's shitty. <laughs> <laughs> it it very very shitty. Well, the RUF hit. It, it it has ostensibly cheap rent, and we very much know why. Well, the roof hit 213 miles per hour in 1987. Ooh, so from 198 to 213. Two, yeah, goodness, that's a big jump. It's big. So twin turboed flat six four hundred six, so but still four hundred sixty three horsepower for that. It had to be geared super long because it was probably realistically it'd a be 60 geared manual. like it would be geared right. like a modern Cayman or a modern like a, a first gen Viper where you don't even use six gear until you're at eighty miles per hour. It, yeah. First first gear in a Viper goes to fifty miles per. Like, it's, yeah, it's I feel stupid, like it was like, geared for for a top speed run or something like it right. Was, to go from 198 to 213, that's pretty. Then was blasted to Kingdom Come in 1993 by McLaren F1. McLaren F1. Therefore, the F40 doesn't even hit the list. No. Never mind, that was the first Ferrari to hit 201. It hit in it in 87, but the, the roof hit it. The, the roof that's seems a shame like the F40 deserves. Though. Oh, it's that's. A yeah, it was like attention. the the, oh. the roof had six built and the the F forty had thirteen hundred built. Well, the so. F forty was two point eight liter twin turbo V eight. Yep, two point eight liter. That's With, a very small V eight. Yeah, that's liter. that's pistons that bottle cap yeah. size. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but also a car that weighed what twenty five hundred pounds. Yeah, well, the, it didn't the, have the paint door handles. So, it had the, string to the, pull. The paint really? so thin you, you could, could see the carbon fiber through red paint. <laughs> yeah. 
I want a car like that. I kind of do too. Uh, As a toy. Uh, yeah, not, not your daily. daily. Not a daily. Well, I think the more time that passes, <laughs> you can see the metal through the red paint on mine. So uh, there's <laughs> that. It came uh, pre scratch and dented. So uh, my sign With a discount. It, my sign uh, is the uh, the F40 tribute. They just a, don't know it. You got a discount. By the yeah. way, this beer is so good. I haven't touched my founder's KBS yet. Yeah, like, and like that's I said, actually, uh, I know, previous, I know. previously on the pod, finding a twelve thousand dollar car for eight, and uh, except for one. Major mechanical issue has been fine in these six and a half months. It's just, it, it smells like gas. I should get this looked at. <laughs> I get this looked yeah, at. I, it's going to be $1,500. I should get this looked at somewhere else. See yeah. you later. Yeah, I, I let Bri- like I picked Brian up and I was, I was explaining to him that a lot of the, I was had some trepidation about getting a Wrangler because the reviews were like, oh, it just rides rough. It's not civil. It, it rides like a, an SUV, it's really comfy. It's very smooth. It's loud as fuck, but that's my doing. Yeah. But it's a completely comfortable commuter car. Like, it really is. Like, a, a CJ7 or, like, a TJ Wrangler from the early night, yeah, that's oh, yeah. not comfy. The modern ones are fine. Dude, I'm not going to get from my Supra and get is... into your Wrangler and say this doesn't ride like a Supra. Of co- like of course it doesn't because it's or a Wrangler, different right? Applications. And it yeah, and it rides like a Wrangler and actually rides like a very comfortable Wrangler to be honest. It really does. Based on what I've my experience, I think it was very comfortable. Yeah, the weather was fantastic and we had open. It was great. I loved it. I, so it, what you're saying is don't put 30 inch rims on it because that's going to ruinate a if, lot of it. If 35 are, mutters, do it. If you're going no, to th- use 30 them, inch wheels, <laughs> yeah. the metal part <laughs> are 30. to use them, they would fit, but you don't want them. They're monster jam down Mid Hill. Go- yeah, if you're going to use them, by all means do it. Sure. But like, I mean, no, if you're 30 inch rims with like one inch sidewalls, <laughs> yikes. If you're going to park at the mall, that's gonna be so there's heavy. no point. Right. If you have to park on a curb to remind yourself you have a Jeep, maybe you shouldn't park uh, like 35 no. inches. I'd love to 17 you, it. Like. You park on someone else's wheel. Only oh, yeah. Other, the you're, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> only at Cars and Coffee or Jeep meets when they like stack that's them. The, the like that, that's, I've seen I'm not doing that because I don't want to warp my tires. Right. <laughs> because I'm like that. But the, I, Brian and I had a discuss. We need to get – we'll get into that after this, but – um. We had a discussion the other day at Poor that we miss cars that were purpose built. We yeah. don't like don't every crossover is exactly the same. I don't I don't want to buy a car that can carry five people and they can carry uh, tow twenty five hundred pounds and then get forty miles per gallon. Build me a fucking car that can go two hundred miles per hour. Build me a car that can tow eight yeah. million give me, pounds. Give me a choice. Wait, yeah, you, yeah. D- you just you just described the V ten Touareg diesel. <laughs> yeah, every car does uh, like the Lamborghini Urus or if, something. If, like. if, sure. if every car can do everything, then there's uh, no differentiation. Then they're all the same. They're gonna, all the same. I'm gonna get a Pontiac Aztec and rebadge it as an Urus. <laughs> no, you need a rear wheel drive do LS, Aztec LS swap in the in when the, a seven liter diesel. <laughs> go on, six speed manual. Look, I got the Supra because it was a two-seater. It was a low two-seater sports car, and that's what I wanted. I'm not getting it to tow a boat. I'm not getting it to... That's a funny visual, it, though. It, I mean, it would be, be a canoe, very small boat. It would be a canoe, boat, but yeah. still. <laughs> Just tack it on the roof. But again, I bought it for a, a specific purpose, and I l- love it for its purpose. It, yeah, it, it, I, yeah, you're right, though. It. If every car can do everything, every car's the same. Yes. Like, the Wrangler should be what it is. It should be a convertible and it have a little wind noise. Yeah. But then a sports car should be low, and the ride shouldn't be choppy-choppy like it used to be, but it's not supposed to be smooth. If you want the smooth ride, you get any you get Lexus. Cadillac. You get a Cadillac. Or a Cadillac or a Lexus. Or a Lexus. You, you get a luxury that. sports car that's got a big motor in a, in a, in a soft, couchy suspension. Absolutely, and if you want to get really good gas, but you're mileage, not going to auto crossing in that no, car. No, if it's you want to get boat. good gas mileage, but have a nice sport, like Steve's car is perfect for that. Right. He can carry, he can carry a little bit of stuff, but it's sporty enough. But it's not a sports car, but it rides nicely. Yes, you, you don't need you don't need a car that does fucking everything. I, I've had yeah. two GTIs and wish not to maintain a GTI, so instead I drive this. Like a GTI. Right. <laughs> and it'll never break. And you can find something that checks those boxes, whatever yeah, boxes you, know, you want to like, check. Mm-hmm. Never, never mind what checkered pass this one had. Like, it's doing quite well since May. Yeah. 
the McLaren F1 was the king of the hill for 12 years until the 2005. Varen. Varen. It was five of those wow, three. Wow, lasted 12 years of 12 time. years of the, yeah. Holy crap. It was the EB110 t- was in there, but didn't go as fast. And no. That's when was the top speed of the McLaren? The McLaren was uh, 221 miles per hour out of its 6-liter V12, which I think Sorry, was Sorry, Jack. Uh, yeah. So that's a significant mm-hmm. difference in mm-hmm. motor size versus the rough. Yeah, 3.3 liter. Twin turbo V or I'm flat six. W. Uh, it says V. Would Wikipedia lie to me? So they went well, close to uh, doubling oh, the motor size. No, wait. The v- McLaren was the V. I didn't. I, I didn't go into the Veyron yet. The Veyron was a W sixteen. Yeah, I. I was thinking McLaren motor. McLaren was a V twelve. Well, I think it was a Mercedes. Whom? I think it was a Mercedes. No, I'm thinking BMW. I think it was BMW. Now that you, I knew it was German, but because it had. I remember like something about that. Look how loud I am, Brian. And I'm at the top. <laughs> but you're louder than Steve. I still can't get Steve to talk loud. Lee. He just gets. He, here's what Steve does. The he'll get here and then he'll get really he comfortable. Back a little bit. Yep, and then I'll go like this, and he'll get louder. And the then the BMW S70. There we go. It had gold foil on its hood. Mm-hmm. Dissipate heat. Why? Dissipate yeah. heat. <laughs> so it actually because serves a purpose. Because yeah. gold is the best at everything except looking attractive. Silver beats it. <laughs> uh, it does. It does. Fair. Wait, what are yours? Your wedding band? Uh, tungsten Ta- carbide. Yeah, and mine's uh, titanium. Oh, I'm jealous. Don't be, because yours are more expensive. <laughs> I mean, it was like 250 bucks. This was $99. <laughs> well, it's light, though. Well, yeah, yours weighs... Yeah, feel how heavy mine is. <laughs> Steve, hey, feel, Steve, how, feel heavy, uh, how heavy mine is. Not Steve, to mention, feel the difference. Plink. That's tungsten carbide. Not to mention, mine won't this ever... This is titanium. Mine won't clean. <laughs> yeah. Um, my, I, mine doesn't either, but it it, it, all, it looked like this when I bought it, and it still looks like yeah, this. Yeah, this middle band... Uh, gentlemen, have be... you read the periodic table? Titanium is famous for being lightweight. And tungsten is not. Uh, also, uh, this is harder to cut. <laughs> yeah, mine, I got it because it's essentially indestructible. But this middle band that looks really dark is actually supposed to be silver, just mm-hmm. a brushed silver. Yeah. And I will clean it, and one day later it'll look like that. <laughs> so, Does it stain onto your fingers at all? No. Okay. Yeah, no, mine doesn't I mean, either. And it's, it's super comfortable. I don't even know I have it on, but it's one of those if, uh, if something ever happened, I'd you, have to actually – it has breaking points. Oh. So you can pinch it and shatter it off yeah, mine because you can't have cut. cut. Yeah. My, you had to cut mine off. But the thing is – At least you can cut titanium, right? I have – yeah, you yeah. can, but I have uh, 10 um, fingers. It, it takes 7,000 degrees in a torch, if, so this is going to hurt. Yeah, if <laughs> one of them, goodbye to your diamond, fucking a finger. A one will cut. But like, <laughs> if I'm ever in the unlikely scenario that one out of the 10 fingers I have is swollen beyond re- – like. I'll, I'm gonna take that. Ri- I don't even. I, I sleep with it on. Like I, I never take this. I thing never off. take mine off. Yeah, yeah. I just keep it on. Um, closest I got is a thirty dollar vibrating alarm Casio watch. Excellent. You can get because those at uh, the sex store too. Hey yo. What time is it? Five. <laughs> <laughs> some days it's six. Some days it's nine. <laughs> I will say uh, because, are, are because of my dumb guys, schedule, uh, I had to get up it, so early. Yeah. I bought mm-hmm. a pair of vibration alarm Casios, <laughs> so that's my first line of defense. They go off. All right, I'm annoyed, mm-hmm. and then goes the BBC, <laughs> and then goes the phone alarm, and then goes the tablet alarm, and then goes the fire alarm. Like it's. A steady sequence of events to make sure I can make it to my miserable job after perusing, at least on time. After perusing X Hamster, BBC means something different to me now. Yeah, I was real confused about the what your morning's Brit- like. The <laughs> British What's Broadcasting on? Corporation. Did that didn't wake you up? The BBC didn't wake you up? Wow. That, <laughs> I'm pre-dilated. I, I think the BBC <laughs> didn't wake you up for is the, job, the yeah. title. Uh, bite the pillow, going in dry. <laughs> Prepare your anus for your job. 
We we are both watch guys, it but we is, have different uh, watch. A pain in the ass. Well, so yeah, my fancy my, my fanciest functional one is a G Shock. So if the well, stakes are low, that was, and that was going to be my comment. Yeah, is, it, it is looks, I really enjoy watches, and it looks G Shocky. But every everybody that has a watch collection, no matter how elaborate their collection mm-hmm. is, a G Shock is a staple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so. My, mine's a red Digilog. That I got at Ross for fifty bucks. That's awesome. During which someone had the same model listed on Cracklist for sixty five. Yeah, I'm calling that a win. Yeah, G shocks and G shocks like, are Se- like Seiko watches are good. To, like there are certain brands of watches that I, are like, dude, for I'm, your money I'm you keen, can't beat a Seiko. I'm yeah, keen on Seiko because yeah. Dad had can't one growing up, but like it was this boring ass silver one, but that always stuck with me. So yeah. you no, know, whenever I make it a Pepsi Seiko for three hundred bucks <laughs> would be a nice step up. A steal. The, the wooden watch Seiko I yeah. have steel. The wooden one I have always gets compliments. And it wasn't even that expensive. And, and citizens so, always get made fun of. It's like you didn't yeah. spend enough on your watch, sorry. Which one are you wearing now? Uh, you don't want to know. Yes I do tell everybody. What you got? It's, it's a it's a Breitling. Breitling. Nice. Yeah. Is, yeah. And those are nice watches. They are. But you know, yeah. When I really make it, I'll get the sixty five hundred dollar Breitling at Costco because that exists. I know it's a beaut. Clark. I got this on a cruise ship in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I got it in Cozumel. I was actually off. The That's a ship. Uh, uh, well. But it's a it's a lot of pesos, nonetheless. It was, it was a lot of pesos. Well, I wanted I wanted the whiskey. <laughs> got to peso watch. yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> okay. I that wanted, is even more. <laughs> I wanted the whiskey barrel watch, but Emily got me the regular, just wooden watch. And I it's was the like, original grain. I. I have those. They're fantastic. Yeah, I I like, you know what? I like the wooden watch so much, and I'm not going to buy the whiskey barrel one because if I do, I'm not going to wear that one. And it was a gift from the woman I love. Right. And you know what? It actually gets complicated. People don't realize, like, dude, no one ever sees a wooden watch. Exactly. They're like, what the? It's so. It wasn't made of. It's like it's made of wood. Like, yeah. Are the gears? I'm like, yeah. Like, really? I'm like, no. Uh, <laughs> no, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's just silly. But here's the thing: we could be sitting right next to Fuck. each other, and I could be wearing my Breitling, and this was not an inexpensive watch. Mm-hmm. And you could be wearing your wooden watch, mm-hmm. and I know how much those run. Yeah. And you would get probably more attention and questions off yours. Well, it's than the, I would. It is the same. Would turn behind you, look behind you. Yep, with yep. the, the guitar. It's the same. Yeah, nobody in the a million years would guess that the green one was seven hundred and fifty dollars, and the right. blue one was two thousand. And you know what kills <laughs> me is I actually view I could actually collect <laughs> guitars mm-hmm. and never play one. Yeah, because to me they almost it's art. Oh my it, god, they're pretty. Which is what. A watch is to me. That's yeah. what a car Cars. is to me. Yeah. It, in my house, I have a guitar and a ukulele I can't play, but yeah. I like looking at. But I would love, I mean, this right here, absolutely beautiful. I love that guitar. I would love to have it. And the thing is, like, they look, they're very similar yeah. in the way they look. They're just different colors, yeah. but the timbers are different. All the wood's different. They were built in different. That one's built in Korea. That one's built in the United States. That one was built by hand. That one's built by a machine. Now, here's the thing about Paul Reed Smith, and this is why I love the guitar so much. Uh, they Their factory is in Stevensville, Maryland. They P- have, PH or V? Get back to you on that. They have, uh, they, have a, uh, they have a guitar place in China, in Indonesia, and in Korea. Every guitar that they built foreign, they ship to Stevensville, Maryland to have set up and inspected. If it has a blemish in it, they cut it in three pieces and throw it in the dumpster. Really? That's how That's quality, good. I mean, that's quality control. The quality that's, control that's of good. them are insane. Good. And even then, that one right there plays excellently. Yeah. And I was like, there's no way the U.S. ones are worth that much more money. Until I bought one, I played it, and I went, like, fuck. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> they actually, that one plays great. The blue one, it's like wearing your favorite pair of worn in jeans yeah it just pl- it just it's so comfortable i get that i mean it, it's so comfortable you can't, to play i mean things with craftsmanship and and it has i a, don't know man it's hard to it's hard to just the back of it has a handwritten serial number yeah. like it, there's something about that you know attention to detail attention Absolutely. to detail that that's yeah. it's so i definitely appreciate that of that course kind of stuff the engineering part of it is, it's it's, it's yeah. incredible like 
I could I could talk guitars for fucking ever. But you know what's funny? But going back to like you know I don't know the, the beers and liquors we drink and and literally everything you do you can find a better version of something. So if if you drink beer you can find a better beer. If you if you drink wine, you drive cars, you play guitars, you like watches. Mm-hmm. I mean anything. There's always a level of craftsmanship that. Either you appreciate it or you don't. Mm-hmm. It depends on, on whether could you Could I like have found a better thing. Mazda 3? Yes. Sure. But <laughs> would it have cost twice? Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I currently have a poor example of a sign I am, and I adore it. <laughs> it came pre-scratch and dented. <laughs> yes, there's, there's an and appreciation to crap. marked the, the string would have been peeled. It, it it was in poor shape. There's an appreciation. It came pre cigarette burned. Oh, like, yeah. but the thing but is, like, if it's a body to death, more with the ins and outs. Not all the time. Like, if something's more expensive, it's not necessarily better. But it should be. It should be. But if it, like, so before I bought that red bass, I played. You can ask him maybe thirty basses on the wall at Guitar Center before I bought that one. That one was 120 bucks. You can't beat that. It played better, and I played. Can a you couple play the opening used... riff to P Cells? Because MTV News back in the day. Maybe I, I'll look it up. It played better than some of the basses that were three or four times. Like sometimes yeah. you just get a magical instrument that just yeah. plays really good. Yamaha doesn't That's make any junk. Steel when you find that. Well, Yamaha yeah. in general makes great stuff. See the Yamaha sticker on it. Yeah, <laughs> Yam- Yamaha made anything. The Yamaha that was their name what the vibes really engine good. was. Was the Yamaha? Yeah. So Paul Reed Smith makes a good bass, but I didn't want to pay that much for a bass because I'm not a bass player. So, and I play live, so those get, you know. But <laughs> funny, that, like, all right, there's the acoustic there. The acoustic is gets is, the that, is that your show one? That's the show one. The blue one's a reward to myself for for. All the money I made from the acoustic one. <laughs> Hell yeah. And it's placed so uh, fucking but, smooth. By, by the way. What you do it for? By that's, the way. That's by a the way, V8. Don't, don't bronze that one. The, no. That one's a V8. Our trophy. That one's a Fox Body Mustang. Like, if I want to. That's a Fox Body Drag V8. Oh, That's wow. an Aston V12. Yeah. They're going to run the same time, but that one's smoother. But you add a little luxury in uh-huh. there. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. And the thing is, the... The neck or the the um the fret the fretboard of that one is rosewood. That one's ebony, and the acoustics ebony. And ebony is a harder wood, giggity. So <laughs> it makes for a faster neck, and you can play it a lot faster, and everything's smoother because the Crisp. the wood is harder. Yeah, and yeah, so the strings snap against the wood a little bit better. It it everything's. Everything's cumulative with instruments. Like Absolutely. Everything you do with it makes a difference. Yeah. Everything you do. And that view of cars an instrument. You have to put all those pieces together and you end up with, mm-hmm. you know, the finished product. And it either plays well or it doesn't play well. Miata is the sum. Miata is Miata. greater than the sum of its parts. Absolutely. Because if you drive it, it's not fat. But no. there's something about driving. Because I've driven a Miata. Have you driven a Miata? I learned stick on I a Miata. Have to. Yeah. It, it's... <laughs> You, you look uh, at it on paper. Miata, Miata and Fiat. On, pa- on paper. Yeah, my, my father-in-law has a Fiat, the <laughs> Fiat 124. And Dude, I got to say, the 124 does make better noises. It does. But you know what's funny? Because of Fiat and FCA being a thing, if you pop the hood, and I showed my father-in-law this, you pop the hood, the um, the sound deadening up underneath, it's just Mopar on it. <laughs> Dang. It does. <laughs> yes. I seen on the windows too. It's so oh, great. It's awesome. so funny. I was like, yes, yeah, so it's my Jeep. It's just Mopar on Mopar. It. It's a, it's a greater than the sum of its parts, though. Absolutely. Th- that'd be like finding toilet emblems on the vibe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which, yeah. I, I never counted them, but it was ever entertaining because I knew what I was getting into and got almost six years out of that car. Or if you're not smart, BMW parts in the Supra. Uh yep. Allegedly. No, uh, no, that's yeah, it's, no. it's pretty what, obvious. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, hi, have you heard of YouTube? Yes, because <laughs> people have been there, seen that, documented it. Yeah, and it will never not be funny. And it's it, nobody that drives a Miata at a track would not have fun. Even the, your, it'd be impossible. If, even your hardest fucking muscle car like V8 yeah. guy, 
it, it that car is popular for a reason. It's a yes. great sports car, yeah. and it is a sports car. And anyone that is yeah somewhat of a driver, right? If they consider themselves a driver and they go out and they do stuff, put any of those guys into yeah, a Miata, man. and they're going to have a fucking blast. You know, so thing. suddenly your your sport is bowling instead of basketball. Right, it's gonna be okay. Yeah, bowling's fun. Can, we yeah. all love bowling. You could drive at home too. Yeah, yeah and, and and with less wrist pain. Yes. <laughs> well, the Veyron had the W sixteen nine hundred and eighty seven horsepower quad turbocharged engine. That was so they just doubled everything. They just, it was just went like went from two twenty one two twenty one to two fifty three point eight four radiators. Yeah, on that all one. that for how many horsepower? Or how many? Sorry, how many mile per hour? Two fifty three. So all uh, that for twenty three horsepower or, or twenty three miles per miles. Uh, no, thirty three. It was two fifty one. Sorry, I was looking at horsepower or I was two, looking at horsepower. Two hundred fifty three miles an hour, if I recall correctly. Yeah, two fifty three to two twenty one. The so four the four hundred k mark. But it, it, it's it's like um, it's not a what's that kind of graph. It's not exponential. It, it's no. You're it's, gonna you're gonna level off. You, you have to. Yeah, it takes a lot more horsepower lot more. to absolutely. In 2007, the SSC Ultimate Aero, the Shelby Supercar Ultimate Aero, actually beat the Bugatti two years later with 256 horse or 256 miles per hour. It was right around three miles per hour difference out of a 6.3 liter twin turbocharged V8 producing 1,183 horsepower. So it had 200 more horsepower and it only went three miles per hour faster. Yeah, so that's a law of diminishing returns. Mm-hmm. But, but also, a, cylinder wise, half the engine. True. Like well, yeah, talking about a W16. Yeah, yeah, though, yeah, that's, like, that's, yeah that's, that's half absurd. the engine. I'm like, I really want to like my VR6 GTI, but that was a complicated piece of late 90s engineering yeah. that had a lot go wrong with but it. The Bugatti, so I had to fight once. The Bugatti had creature, co- like, it had air conditioning. Like, I think the, the shell, the. The American supercars usually, yeah. The, when they go for the, one thing, they go for it, and they don't the, care about yeah, anything the, else. The Viper was famously Spartan for a while. Like the later ones got better. Savage Geese did the Gen Four Viper a review today, and it's actually a good review. Uh, it's going to be him doing whatever it is that he does, and it's going to be entertaining in his own little way. I love. Have you seen Savage Geese? No. On YouTube, it's it's really good car reviews. What's that? Uh, Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. It, it, when they did the C5 Vet, it was the best sports car under twenty thousand dollars. Which honestly, it probably is. But he, he said, I can't argue with that. I guess he, yeah. he said, "Look, I can't get past the interior because it sounds like two gimps rubbing together." In the <laughs> back. <laughs> he said, "Everything squeaks and yeah. rattles." Yeah, you know, it's like you know, but let, it's fast as hell. Yeah, <laughs> Letter sitting was a poor choice because it often is. Yeah, uh, the SSC Ultimate Era was re-trumped. Sorry. By the Veyron De- Supersport. Defeated. 267.8 miles per hour. Uh, by, by the way, the T word is now being repurposed for failures. Trumped. 11. How, like, how, how do you bankrupt a casino? 11 and a half miles per hour difference. Uh, the Bugatti had a, <laughs> a, the same 8 liter W16, but now produced 1,183 horsepower. That's a lot of dimensions. Same horsepower. Yeah, but look at the. I don't know, man. Like that, you talk about the displacement differences, and you go from a a W sixteen. You should be. I don't know. Bugatti's heavy. Bugatti's heavy. Well, it's got to yeah, be with uh, that motor. I mean, that motor it, itself it, is two thousand pounds. That it's all drive. Like you just look at the car. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like Shelby, a boat. It looks heavy. Shelby's rear wheel drive. Yikes, that'd be... Uh, in this mix of toy cars here, I don't have a Vare, and it would have crushed them all. Uh, to make room for Brian, I had to put all the other shit behind him <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. No problem. We, we, oh, want, did, we want you did, to be comfortable. Did you showcase the beach jeep? I should have. You should check out the hey, beach jeep. Uh, now that I have a... Ra- you bought you. that one I, yeah. right when I bought the Wrangler. Yes. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that. Oh, shit, I don't know if I have. You would see anymore. one just. You would see one just like that at the beach, and Absolutely. it'd be just as clean. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you see in Florida too, where all the beaches are flat. So they, oh, yeah. they pretend like they're gonna. It's just it's a road beach. Yeah, I'll never do that. Like yeah. I, I'm just my. I have the cleanest Wrangler ever, but yeah. I didn't buy it. I buy it to go anywhere, like to play music. 
Yeah. And but I'm not gonna lift it or anything. So yeah. you can come visit me in Florida, and dude. No, don't fucking move, cause I'm gonna have to move to Florida, cause I actually like you. <laughs> I don't like everybody. Florida's great. I love Steve, and I love you. I can't like. I'm trying to look up the weight of a of the Veyron, and I I'm. It's got to be like it's 4,200 pounds. It's got to yeah, be as much as say it's north of curb four. weight. Massive curb weight is. It has a range. I guess it depends on which one you get, but it has 4,052 pounds to 4,387. Depends on the driver. So I it guess. weighs so what my Jeep <laughs> weighs. Driver yeah. so That's ridiculous. It, so an yeah. average of 4,200. Plus or minus, yeah. But yeah. can't you say that car with that kind of ridiculous-ass motor should be able to go faster? Or no? Yes. I would think like, so. I feel like, that's, like they're making up with terrible efficiency and engineering with just a bigger motor and bigger display an well, eight liter the yeah. thing eight that liter w16 the what always cracked me up about that the moon the the thing that always cracked me up with that one was james may saying yeah uh so in this time you're going to run out of fuel in 15, before you even finish your in run. 15 minutes <laughs> or you know, you run out of fuel in you know 12 minutes mm-hmm. Which is good because your tires would be expired by 15. (laughs) Yes. God. Bested for, all right, the Bugatti Veyron 16.4 Super Sport in 2010 did 267.8. It was bested in 2017 by the Koenigsegg Jera RS 277.8. So 10 miles per hour difference. Out of a guaranteed a much smaller motor. Five liter twin turbo V eight producing one thousand three hundred forty one horsepower. I yep. mean now we got efficiency in the play here. The base engine was rated at that at so eleven better than us. Eleven factory cars were specced with the thirteen hundred horsepower. Nikola Lia drove one of them in November of twenty seventeen. Its top speed was independently verified by Race Logic at two seventy seven point eight. Damn. Recently and by recently I mean recently. 2020 Shelby Supercars, the Twatera, 316 miles per hour. Whoa. So you went from, what was it, Did you not hear about this? No. This is why we oh, talked about this today. Oh, shit. This is Twatera. <laughs> Wait, hold on. What was, so the, the 277. Was 277. Yep. The av- all right, so th- when, they do an, when they do a top speed run now, they do, you go this way, you go that way. And, and you you're talking the like average. Flats, right? you, you're and you do the just, average. Yeah. You or do the average. whatever have you. Yeah. The average was 316. Oh, the twata- the SSC Twatara. The top observed, though, was... 331 miles per hour. Whoa. One direction. At a 5.9 liter twin turbo V8 producing 1,750 horsepower. Would you Whoa. like to see what this car looks like? This car was built. There's I only haven't thirty still built. Seen it? There's uh, you haven't seen it? No, I'm just keep like hearing about it like from it. Independence Day or something. Like so it. this car was built with one goal in mind, speed. and it was speed. They they put it was wind tunnel tested. This is the this is the design for that speed, like the most aerodynamically the most efficient aerod- yeah. car, and it's going to remind you of a cross between any Pagani ever built. <laughs> And any McLaren I never built. I mean, there's only so many options. Wedge, you wedge can blob, have, right? wedge blob. Oh my god, yeah, yeah. Wedge blob. Yep, wedge blob. Better, better wedge blob, but still wedge blob. So, this car goes. I and mean, eventually, we're gonna find the most efficient shape, right? I would think so. That this the, the car. The are full of shit. That uh, <laughs> like, well, like. Dish with the bubble? No, that's not our dynamic. That's not it. At top speed, this I, I car was going one you mile. Be, like so high up, then there's no atmosphere, so aerodynamics don't play. Don't but care. no, this this car was going one mile every eleven seconds <laughs> <laughs> at top speed. I mean, that's that's yeah, almost that, unfathomable that, that's, for uh, unless you're an astronaut. Like that doesn't even yeah, make sense. Yeah, that that's. What my dad told me years ago was saying, like, yeah, if you're doing 60, you're covering a mile in a minute. In a minute. Yeah. That's standard. All you're right. Like, okay. And best I could but do 11 was... 11 seconds? No. But best I've personally done was 
two miles in a little less than said minute right. in the <laughs> problematic VR6. No, dur- during a, a good day, and I'm yeah. 20, and I'm dumb, but hey, 85 out of Kannapolis is a generous span, allegedly, to do such thing. Yeah, And evidently, at the top speed, you cannot hit the brakes. <laughs> if you hit just the brakes, impossible. it's going to flip. You're going to yeah, die. Yeah. You, you can't just, even you just coast. You no, you can't even let off the gas at that speed. Oh my god. You have to feather slowly it. feather off the or gas. You get to bends and you just like the, fly the, off and the then. guy the guy who drove it and Oliver something. Yeah. Um, or he kept Oliver Webb. Ollie. Oliver Webb, Ollie. Uh, he had said, I hope somebody else breaks it because I'm never doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> and these are guys that are, that's their job. To be yeah. fearless. So, yeah, you have, to, you have to slow down to almost 200 miles per hour, and then you can kind of feather the brakes. You can't just hit the brakes at 300 miles per hour because it's going to, just the drag of everything, if you hit the brakes, it, it, it's, it's going to explode everything. The, yeah. yeah. Um, no- during the day they hit this they had a seven mile an hour cross breeze which is why it had such a difference of run a and run b yeah they were it was it would jump the car would jump like one to two meters i'm actually surprised that they would do it with a seven <laughs> mile i mean a seven mile an hour cross breeze is, is <laughs> yeah that's a lot, uh, that's a that, lot. well that's like they're scrubbing the shuttle launch you know well, what I'm saying? Uh, like that's that's mm-hmm. a pretty aj big, uh, yeah. Remember the first truck that well, the ninety seven mm-hmm. that if it was windy out was noticeably terrible. It was yeah because it was a twenty seven hundred twenty seven hundred pickup truck yeah. twenty seven hundred mm-hmm. pound pickup truck. I will note like I don't notice that problem with the new Wrangler. No, I, I don't. don't I, there's I, no way. I, there were a few times I noticed in the vibe like. The three thousand pound Scion, no, it's planted. It's good. Has a seven speed manual transmission in this one, I, huh? Yeah, and he was saying something about it's a rear wheel drive thing. It's not all wheel drive. It's rear. Whoa. But the thing is, rear wheel drive is lighter. You well, true. Yeah, less drivetrain. Yeah, but no drivetrain loss. And it's he has unlimited space. Curb weight. Speed, right? What's the curb weight? A bunch of threes. I'll say he's probably going to be probably pushing four, but I'll say thirty eight hundred. Two thousand seven hundred and fifty. Whoa! <laughs> there you have it. The first Tacoma, but with I'm surprised he didn't just launch off fifteen the times Six. the horsepower. All right, so the right <laughs> five point nine liter, three hundred sixty inch cubic inch twin turbo V eight. 1,750 horsepower on flex fuel. In a 2,800. Seven-speed manual, rear-wheel drive, 2,750 pounds. I'm pretty I mean, sure that is Now when you tell me that where he's like, I'll never do that again. That, that's yeah. bananas. I, I get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just, holy the, there's crap. a video. You can watch the video. It, it's it's sc- got to be squirrely as hell. Scary. Oh, yeah. Scary. But what's scarier is how fast it goes from 200 to 300. Really? It's... It, uh, it's stupid. It goes it, 2, 210, 220, 230, 240, 250, 260, keeps climbing. 270. They said they would, if they wouldn't have had the crosswind, they might could have hit 350. Now they just that, need a driver. Uh, I think, <laughs> well, that and the track and change of seat because it's been Fuck. shat upon. I got to piss. Seriously. Normally yeah. I can wait, but I got to go. Do yeah. it together. That takes Just stones to do. Bonkers make yeah. Plus, if, yeah. If they remo- if they removed his brass balls, they might yeah. actually be able to get a couple uh, miles an hour. Totally. Um, nope. No, brass is so heavy though. Yeah. But aluminum balls doesn't sound good. Silicon balls sounds too high tech. <laughs> lithium balls. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. So because when, when lithium driver... being used for you know mood supplements. <laughs> Unfortunately, that would probably like you know lessen the blow. Yeah. He would have only hit three twenty five. True, yeah. it would still be news, but not such epic news that whatever they wanted to do, they average north of five hundred kilometers an hour. Therefore, the Europeans are freaking out yeah. with that figure. We know this because we both 
heard the same fucking tire episode, and the guy couldn't have sounded cooler about it all. That <laughs> you know he's he's done some interesting things, and this might have been the interestingest. I like that. That's a good word. Fantastic. We we like the makeup stuff here. Yeah. You should you should do it sometime. All I know is when your driver, that, that is his job, is to do top speed runs. Yeah, and, and your driver comes out and raises his hand and said, I'm never doing I, that again. Yeah. Uh, probably pushing it. They, they've got to know where to find Rowdy Pope's, right? Because that guy <laughs> gives no fucks. <laughs> We're going to send Rowdy Pope's out, yeah. and he'll get a bunch of threes on it. Yeah. So if I can't nail it on weight, I'll nail it on new top speed. Alleg- like, allegedly, what is the fastest all three of us have been? Fuck like thirty. You beat me. At one sixty five. It was. It was what? my Evo. The oh, nice. The yeah. VR six GTI. Mine was the Starion. Outside, like uh, going north out of Kannapolis on eighty five. That I was twenty at the time. Like that. That was what I was telling him about as soon as he left that. The fastest I went was in the best worst car I've had. Yeah, mine was one twenty five in the Starion in an eighties car, so I had the oldest car. But yeah, it was uh, the, smooth. It, well, it, it was w- heavy though. That yeah. that ninety eight was that ninety eight car was lowered, mm-hmm. and it was chipped, so it required premium. And when it ran, it was fun. But when it broke, it was a pain in the ass. Uh, yeah. So that's why I kept it five months. Might have been six too many, but learned a lesson. Like, I really want to like Volkswagen. I don't. But <laughs> I really do. Uh, like, see a lot of Golf R's going through. It's like, this the Super GTI. Like, I, I want to like this. I really do like this. Mm-hmm. I should not have this. I cannot afford this. You, I you like this. Right I thing. like this a lot. So for, <laughs> like, for a commuter, uh-huh. for want having one vehicle uh-huh. as your daily, uh-huh. you've made the right hatchback choice. Yeah, <laughs> uh, re- replacing the previous one that was the right hatchback choice. Yeah, Unfortunately, absolutely. the current car might not be able to eat a futon nor a washer. Fair. It's the the size reduction is noticeable. <laughs> I I lost two inches bumper to bumper and seven in height and that's a lot four, and probably four in ground clearance. Like the the thing sits lower than it should. Yeah. I I rub on speed bumps if I hit them above seventeen miles an hour. Oh god. <laughs> I gained nine inches in height, three inches in width. 1,100 pounds. But <laughs> what about the Jeeps? hey <laughs> What do you have in your little bag, mister? What do you got? Ooh, you ready for the next one? Fuck. Does a bear shit in the woods? So you said this last beer was your favorite. I'm willing to put this one up against it. Oh, my. That's... Uh, you've still got the blue beer crank. Wait, yeah. I got to get my Biden on. And this is, I was telling Steve earlier, I think you were gone at the moment, but this is an Alam's Imperial Stout, which is a Hunapu variant. So Hunapu, Hunapu is great. Is, yeah. So I, the, I've the never heard festival. of that prior now. It's like, um, yeah, sorry, you, you he said, brought Hunapu last time he was on. Yeah. I adore the fact he was on it. earlier, but hell if I remember that. Now I have I to say. That he was here. That he has Supra, and we had a fun time, but who are you people, and what are we doing here? Now, now we're doing the same thing. Now I have to see when he was on. I'm going to guess. You about, bought it last year? About a year Supra? ago. I bought it in, I think it was right in August or September. I want to so say I'm you were right about a year. Oh, my God. I can't believe it's been that long. It's been a dude. COVID. Is, it's been a really strange year. Dude, um, Valley Company still likes me. Never mind, I haven't done anything with them since February. 
My favorite tagline of every episode we've ever done is 56, the wheel is moving, but the hamster is dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite one. Oh, my God. This one. We've never done a deep dive in Kia. What are you talking about? That. So this is a Hunapu aged on Spanish cedar, basically. So it's got a little Spanish bit of a, cedar, a, little, a little bit of a spice to it. Oh, that's good. Something, something, I just did it on. Yeah. What, I can't get the Clash on? Oh, wait, you hate the Clash. Never mind. Spanish I Bombs. I fucking do hate the Clash. Spanish Bombs is one of the better songs. August 19th of 2019 is, is when you were here last. Wow. So, yeah. So I probably had the car he wasn't only the a last. couple weeks, right? You weren't the last. The, the, the he wasn't the last guest we had because we had Sean Smith after that. But we talked about the Supra and then your least favorite concert, and we had some Cigar City stuff last go. time. Yeah, that's all I have is Cigar City. Yeah. Oh my god! All right. I so wish I had a new least favorite concert, but I've never been to a concert since then. Nobody's been to one this year. Yeah. I've played a couple, but not Jeez. as many as I like. I, uh, miss, we, I miss live music, but that's. What what's the wait bef- before we before we go into anything like that? Um, yeah. Then they go into my favorite live albums. Slatcha. <laughs> Cheers, fellas. Likewise. So slant, this is the Hunapu. Slate like me, slate you. This is a variant that's done in Spanish cedar. Oh my! So you get a little bit of. That's so good. Oh my god! Yeah. You taste the pepper without really burning it. Yeah, there's no burn. It's just yeah, you just, get that Spanish cedar right in your right in your face. Wow. Hey. It's just well balanced. That's that, amazing. That's unlike anything I've ever had. Yeah, that, that's. I mean, the other one was too, but I've had things. This is one similar, of my favorite beers, I think, ever. To be honest, no, that that like, no bullshit. That's that's really good. Yeah, because I like I like burning and I like spicy food and I like like pepper and my like that's so yeah different. No it's, heat. Yeah, no heat. it's you get the flavor. The did, spice. did they use wasabi instead? Because wasabi is a quick burn. Like wasabi <laughs> doesn't linger. Right in the sinuses. Chili <laughs> will continue to injure you, but wasabi, yeah. like, it, all right, here's this. You're wasabi's done. Wasabi's polite at least. Yeah, it wasabi's you, polite, yeah. quick. It, it's yeah. I'll in a fairy Japanese. Yes, <laughs> wasabi's like it hits you really hard, and it goes, "I'm just fucking with you. It's okay. Seriously. We're friends." Like it just punch you in the face. You're yeah. like, oh, and then we're, you're like, "Yeah, we're four buddies." Uh, that we're that buddies. said, I I finish off a bag of Asian trail mix yesterday. That was wasabi p heavy. I eat that every night. <laughs> oh do you? Oh yeah, my! You're just hungry an hour later. <laughs> <laughs> we broke Brian. I like it. <laughs> it's always good a good time good to jokes. break the guests. Yes, right. yes. So what's the the limit? All right. So I think about this a lot too because I used to I played basketball in high school. So I wonder what the limit is. Like when we're gonna see a three point dunk, and also, but when we're gonna see like a four hundred mile per hour car like what's the what is the limit to what at you least could possibly any, do on planet well Earth? at least anything street legal that street. this ssc twatara twatara yeah. could they have given it a worse name that oh it's the, the ssc twat well, the, twa- the, twat the, the Brits great. are going to have a field day with this title i don't care if it's t u a t we know what this first syllable is. There's a limit to, on the planet Earth, where the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 feet per second squared. Correct. There's a limit yeah. to what you can possibly do. It's terminal velocity, do. and that is the best use of a Cadillac Alante ever. Well, there's a yeah. limit to what you can do, but also, back to when we're talking about Supra, there's, there's a law diminishing return. So, yep. to the everyman like us, if you want to go as fast as you possibly can in a straight line, there's go to the junkyard for three hundred bucks and go get the fucking body of a fox body Mustang. Yep. And then spray a three hundred shot of nitrous and then put yep. a humongous turbo on it and go as fast as you want. But here's the thing too, like, what's the faster car? A car that runs a ten second quarter mile. Or a car that runs a second faster than that car on a road course. What's right. the faster? It depends on what you're doing. What What's your unit of measure? Like exactly. Who's got the faster quarter mile? Who's got the faster track time? Yeah. And, and, I, and I, how I rickety to, is this thing? 
And I go back to what AJ says, usable power. Yeah. yeah. So I could, you know, right now I could replace the turbo. I could do all this ridiculous shit and I could have a thousand horsepower Supra. Mm-hmm. Or, okay, great. So when, guess what? Now I, I can't drive that anywhere real. It doesn't idle. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you want a drag car or do you want a usable street car? And I, Wait, you, the four to 500 horsepower range is very streetable, wait, very. You don't have turbo sixes that have the, for fear of offending people, slowed timing that at idle it sounds like it's pulling seven the, not the, 700 just the seven Gen 4 rpm Supras do like they, they'll they'll they will pull up to a drag strip and they sound like they're about to die like and then down, like, blah, blah, and then they'll blah, run blah, a nine second quarter mile yeah. Yeah. but it my interest is usable street power yeah, that, yeah that's what i wanted that's what i want you're, you're like, gonna run up to how, that car on the street or, and it's gonna spin Sure. Or it has to have drag. Or if he beats me, how, I'm like, fine. That's a track car. Like, or I have no let's get, with that. Or right. let's get bored to death seeing, all right, how fast can it go around the Nürburgring? Sure. Like, you're you're pulling a six on it? That's impressive. And the first guy, the first three guys that did it crashed on the first curve. <laughs> One of my favorite Top Gear reviews ever, ever, is the C6 ZR1 versus... An Audi R8 V10. Do you Ooh, guys that's remember? A good, that's a good matchup. I haven't seen that episode right. though. The all right. So at the end, he's uh, they they did a drag race. They did a handling. He said, "All right, be in no doubt. The Audi is the better car. Sure, it's better built." He said, "It's better." You to got look luxury. At. You have he your said, AC, "It's better to look radio. at." I don't yeah. think it is, but he said, "Better to look at. It's better built. It's better to drive. And in the real world, it's faster." He goes, you wouldn't have to be bonkers to buy that Corvette. And that's why you should. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's more fun. He goes, uh, yeah. Despite the waywardness and the danger, he goes, the Corvette's more fun. It, Dude, the Audi is the corporate guy's car uh-huh. that wants to drive fast, and he has a little sports car in him. And he, but he's not going to buy a vet because the vet's too raw. Mm-hmm. So you have, I don't know, guys like my dad. Uh, never mind how that, crazy looking an R8 is. Yeah. It's more restrained than most. I like the it first is. generation better than the second. I thought the first generation R8 was a better looking car than the second gen. Yeah. I thought it looked special and different. I thought they flattened it and made it look like a TT. And the second mm, gen, yeah, it looked more like a TT. Like, but when you talk about finding some, that some car that encompasses TC, all wolf. these different things, mm-hmm. and Audi is one of those cars that's trying to do that. So you have the speed, you have the power, you do have the luxury. So you have the guy. That's why the Golf R is going to yeah. be the answer. Yeah, <laughs> it is a very plain looking fast car, right? <laughs> So you have that guy who who graduates and gets an Audi. Mm-hmm. You still have that refinement. You have a little bit more money, a little Th- mo- more luxury. Thanks, mm-hmm. but I still get an S three hatch with a stick. That'd be super. Thanks. Yes. The because <laughs> otherwise, but the guys I'm talking Audi about is dead. No, no, they're not. They're, <laughs> right. they're doing this, and right. they can sick a duck. Yeah. <laughs> they had a they had an R a brand new R eight. When I bought the Jeep from the Audi dealership. That's so Correct. funny. $195,000 for that new R8. <sighs> it's nice. It sure is. But when you start talking about 195 wow, my options are really opened There's up. There's a lot. There's a lot. Like, Shit got weird. Anything, anything uh, I want. I could have it, it's funny, three like, Supras. You, yeah. like, you bought, ridiculous. You could have had, had a Viper MSX. and a... You could have had a... Your, yeah, you could have had your Supra... Yeah, a it, fifth gen Viper yeah. used, and probably a used NSX. And like ten right hand drive Japanese vehicles. From you could have had anything. Japanese for that much money. You could have had a Pajero and had a blast. Yeah, <laughs> nice. I'd build a garage for a hundred thousand dollars and spend the, the the rest of the ninety filling it with. Uh, awesome you said cars. warehouse funny, but yeah. go on. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's like you bought your Jeep from an Audi dealer. Mm-hmm. I bought my Skyanara from 
a BMW and VW tuner shop turned into electric vehicle heavy leaning thing that they had a couple of Teslas, a couple of gigantic solar powered golf carts. Like they <laughs> they've reinvented themselves there apparently next to the Atlanta movie studio that's currently doing nothing because of the everything, right. but they would have requests from actors that need a lot of cars in a hurry and they could provide. Do so you? they have the story. They had a road test of the Mark II GTI like stamped on the wall. Like that was cool seeing like, hey, I had that car to continue owning as a poor idea <laughs> that that my particular example would dump a quarter oil in a thousand miles, but <laughs> it, it was fun. And if you have an oil leak rivaling spy hunter, is that going to help your hooliganing? Maybe. <laughs> well, but to okay. have you know that trait amongst the car makes it all the better. It had a buzzing oil low alarm. If you hit a turn strong enough, it would beep at you. Colin remembers this. This is one of our running jokes to this day is my buzzing Volkswagen and it's low oil light. It's like, well, time to throw some more 10 to be 40 in it. It's fine. I did buy my Maxima from a General Motors uh, dealership. I uh, bought the second Tacoma from Gay. Ben was Minette. it? Uh, no. Oh, that was no. The vibe originated from Ben Minette, oh, yeah. and I didn't know what a plastic razor was at the time, so I could only took one T off somehow. I J- said so Ben Minette. Get. But uh, no, the second Tacoma was from Gay Chevrolet, but Gay with an E. That doesn't count, does it? <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> you have to uh, all my, the way gay. My my previous would have been ex girlfriend thought that was hilarious and don't date anybody from Eastern North Carolina. You don't date it's anybody from there. You never date anybody who's named after a season or a month. No summers, no autumns. But also, no Mays, no Junes, no Aprils. <laughs> um, Although, Anthony that, bucked the trend and, and married a guy named August. So, And he's good people, and Anthony's good people. But every time I've yeah, dated somebody named after a month, it's gone awry. I'm getting flashbacks to Autumn. Jeez Louise. You I, lucked out, buddy. Even uh-huh. though I haven't seen you in forever. Uh, to, today's a good day. Yes, I, I like the episodes with guests um, because we get new perspectives on things. I'm I'm looking forward to some Mexican food what, too. What are we talking about? Do we care? No. Uh, we need to get Chad on. I, I'm going to message Chad tomorrow and be like, "Hey, we want to do one on location with you. Talk about beer. Talk about cars. Do the thing with the stuff." I don't have any shows. I have a show next week, but I've got a party, a Halloween party tomorrow. I have no costume for. Do you need to be the dude? It's at Brittany's house. Uh, I don't know if Emily's coming or not. She's certainly invited, but I don't know. I don't have to work till Monday, so I'm off Sunday. I'm off Saturday, Sunday. I work Monday. I'm off Tuesday. Then I work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. My second man's on vacation. And then after that, I go on vacation Way shortly go. thereafter. Way to go, boss, boss. Yeah. So I go on vacation shortly thereafter. So. Ujivai. I enjoy this. <laughs> Prost. I'm, learn- I'm doing it's Bosnian. Ujivai. Kakosi. That sounds good. Cheers. Kakosi. How are you? Yeah, we go. Strava. Yeah. Stravo. Kakosi is hello. How are you? 
And then uh, Yebby guy. Good oh. Yebby guys. Fuck Yebby it. Guy. <laughs> in Bosnian, Yebby guys. Fuck it. Dude, why didn't you get that as your license plate? Yebby Yebby guy, guy is the best word ever. Because on an American-made vehicle, and if I got on it, if I get a Yugo, I'll get Yebby guy. <laughs> How about never? Is never good for you? I would like to have a Yugo just to have a Yugo. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, get a Mar 2 GTI. It's the same diff. Yeah, Is but I want unreliable Eastern European transportation. No, you get unreliable Western European American built transportation. So now the Brian's back. What what is the what is the limit? Like there's always gonna be a market for like the Uber rich people who want the fastest car in the world, but like is it is it even important anymore? It's impressive. Yeah, I feel like the Have you heard of a pissing contest? So I'd like the, yes, the it Uber is. rich just jump on an airplane. Yeah. And now it's become about the fastest, you know, G four, five, six, you know, whatever whatever you decide to jump into. I don't into. see what rat bastard Pontiacs from the death of that <laughs> brand had to do with like a any G6. of this. That said, I did get a speeding ticket in a G6 rental. I'm just saying those guys aren't aren't jumping into our cars. No. And saying, no. let's let's see what I can do with it. No. Like, it's a whole different universe. It is. I, but... If we're talking exotics, Fine. there's got to be a limit. There's got to be a limit. You, you it, get the sign north of 100 as well. All right. Yeah. We'll talk. If somebody gave me an Good option of two cars late. and said, this one goes 200, but this one goes 0 to 120 faster than anything that you'll ever drive, I'd take that one. That's the car I'm picking. Yeah, that's... Yeah, top speed sounds like in the my real world. Eyeballs exist. will be right. sucked into my back of the skull. You're, you're, yeah. Yeah. you're, you're at the the limit of aerodynamics at that point, anyway. So. Right. So I had two there, cars. There's reason everything looks the same. My right. two highest speeds that I've ever driven to this point, in the allegedly, super, allegedly, <laughs> in Mexico. My first one it, was. It's got to be metric then. My, Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Celsius. In, in peso, <laughs> Fine. In <pesos. laughs> How many? 152 pesos per hour. <laughs> when you're Australian, it's uh, like, how many miles per hour are you going? I don't know. We do cunts and dingoes. <laughs> <laughs> I, either way, 170. Go on. <laughs> but So the first one was my Acura RSX, and it didn't stop yeah, until well, I hit the governor, and it yeah, was 152. Well, nice. Okay. Uh, what's, it, up, what's up, Post Integra? But it took a long time to get there. You guys know Acura's. Yeah, but it's an eighty five hundred dollar or eighty five hundred red line, mm-hmm. and it took all of it to get mm-hmm. there until I was limited. So you're in the talking, sixth or fifth gear? Because oh, I was, I had a two thousand five, so it was sixth gear, mm-hmm. and it took probably a good mile or two. Well, it's funny okay. because mechanically, that's what became the TSX that you had, isn't it? It was instead the, of no, the, it was a different engine. The, the RSX Type S had a two liter four cylinder. Yes, the TSX had a two point four liter, which okay. is the same right. engine in Emily's Accord, but which, that one's detuned. But that's neutered. A lot of people did a Frankenstein mm-hmm. of a two four bottom and a two o top because Honda is like that because you can just mm-hmm. bolt them on and you could get a lot more power really easily. But yeah, so that was. It took a long time to get there, and I and I got there, but there's <laughs> that, no top speed run that, there. That's still more we can claim, so right. there's that. Mm-hmm. And then the second was the Evo, which, because I was tuned and had all this work done, got to the 165 quickly, but then it actually ran out of gearing because there's only a five-speed. That's right. So I had, I had actually plenty of power, and I ran out of gearing. I was... I was topped well, out. Gearing's a funny thing. Like, and that I, Evo I'm needed on, a six gear. So I, I'm on my <laughs> second six speed, but yeah. both cars, gutless as they are, are pulling three k at seventy. Yeah. Um. Or maybe they will pull four k at a hundred. Wink, that's wink, two nudge, thousand. Nudge. That's yeah. two thousand uh, was pulling four k at eight. You know, it's like it's yeah, it's, it's like I, I'm never it. winning a drag race, but it's nice to know 
it can do this. Oh yeah. <laughs> like I I'm running late and yeah. 45 traffic at 5:30 in the morning in that quadrant. No one really seems no to stress. care. No, no. Stress and motor. you know driving in a bright red car or being a red whatever the hell it is yeah. in the dark doesn't matter. It's like return trips home take a bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it's it's still rendering thirty on the way in and like thirty seven on the drive home. Yeah, there's a there's a limit to your ninety five percent of your customer base. Yes. So most people, I gotta shut it myself. <laughs> Fuck you, my knees busted. Well, you got three pedals. I got two feet. It wasn't scary to go one twenty five in the Starion. It was actually pretty comfortable. But after that run, you know, we, we pulled, you know, we, we got back to Josh's house and we popped the hood and my turbo was glowing bright red. <laughs> but that's a different, I mean, it cooled down. It was, it was okay. Yeah. Steve so. mentioned something early about age. And, you know, when I talk about what I did with the RSX and the Evo, that was, that was over 10 years ago. Yeah. You know, so yeah. now I have a car that is fully significantly faster defeating those correct and the fastest i've ever been in the super is like 110 or 120 Mm -hmm. so i mean there's a level of holy shit my deductible versus you know bulletproof let's see how far this this car can go and one and that goes back to your point of like streetable power right so yes if you're evil knievel and you're like i want to go 180 miles an hour to work you know, knock yourself out. But most of the people aren't doing that. And you, to have streetable power, I want zero to a hundred to really hit me hard, and yeah. that, that's where my comfort. That's where my, I guess, excitement zone is. I of course, guess. yeah, that's where you that's drive. Where the thrill is. If, if we're if we're it's driving like a brown if we're on the drag strip, my car, so yeah. if, if I shit myself, I can't tell. If we're at the drag strip, yeah, you. But if. If you're going to drive the car on the street, zero to 100 is where you live. That's it, so, man. And in yeah. fact, honestly, 25 to 85 is where you well, live. Well, yes. If you really no. want to get technical, yeah. It's, I mean, the, uh, the S2K was great. It's when you finally great. break away from traffic and you get, you know, from, yeah, from 25 or 30 and, you know, to 85 or 90. That's that's where you're. I mean, the S2K was great, but at, at the top of third gear, you you can get your license taken away. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Just because yeah. the gear, uh, so everything. Well, line of well, and even at the top of six, well, you're AP going deaf. One, AP1 was 9,000, and AP2 was 8,200. It's like a motorcycle. Yeah, it, it's, it's, like, it's a motorcycle with power band. Yeah. And then in my XJ was 5,300. You're like so, having to shift twice. You're like, what the it's fuck? It's completely different, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well... Do we have time to delve into any music? I would actually like if we have like 20 minutes. Okay. I would like to jump into Seven Dust. Because Let's do it. You told me you were going to talk about Seven Dust. So I did my homework today. All right. And I listened to Seven Dust. Yeah. Gonna, I did I'll, my car work instead. I've got a borrowed Spotify account and <laughs> was reminded of some – Awesomeness from the late nineties, early aughts. That oh yeah, th- this stuff sounds good. And if I'm blasting this out the car, people will remain scared. Right? Not Rammstein scared, but not <laughs> far off that mark because that was the previous benchmark. Yeah. But I'll I'll keep my my thoughts short. But I want to say I was pleasantly surprised with revisiting. Seven Dust, and, I, and I'll tell you why. I listen to Apple Music, and Apple Music will put together an essentials playlist. So if you look up Dude, Seven yeah, Dust. Kalen's Kay- got it, and I'm not thrilled with whatever they're doing with their thing. We have no? different tastes, though. But do continue. No, but I mean, so going through the... Well, it, try, trying to make it play, like, artist radio... Oh, yeah. like, uh no this this pre-made playlist has this artist in it like 
This is not what I asked. Oh no. The, the pl- shuffle. So these this essentials band. are like specifically for this artist. So if I look up Seven Dust, they're like, here's the Seven Dust songs you need to listen to. Okay. So that's what got me into it today, and I was like, all right, let me do my homework on Seven Dust. Bitch, bleed Terminator. Yeah. Yeah. I feel so. Bitch is great. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Black. So then you realize as I'm going through this playlist, I'm like. Number one, I know all of these songs. <clears throat> Number two, I love all of these songs. And then you start to think back and you realize Seven Dust has had a really, really long career. Like they started in like Se- 94. Uh, and Their first album was like 97. 97. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then where they kind of sneak up on you is they release a couple good hits throughout the years. But then when you actually compact them into one playlist you realize they have a really really good catalog of songs and it i don't know i was you know going through actually listening to seven dust today i was very very impressed and a little bit nostalgic of like wow these guys are awesome and they've been around for a long time you know and their lead singer adds le john witherspoon is his name Oh my God, he's great. He's fantastic. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's not many, there's not many black lead singers in that genre of music. That that is my favorite variant of black metal. Kill Switch yeah. Engage. Black metal. Kill Switch is a, is a black great metal one. proper. Oh, bl- I no, and, that's not black. Not Seven Dust is not black metal. No, but like black. Seven Dust no, is ha- groove metal, which is Pantera. <laughs> Kill Switch Engage is. Metal core. Yes. And here's here's my distinction between the two. Well, there I goes can, my joke. I can Thanks. hear the music of Seven Dust, and I can hear the music of Kill Switch Engage. Mm-hmm. Kill Switch Engage is a little more, I don't want to say generic because I really like them. Seven Dust, the moment I hear the lead singer come in, I know it's Seven Dust. Mm -hmm. He has a very definitive, it's just, I don't know, it's just seven dust. The the voice, the noise, the guitar work. Yes. It's very chunky. A certain, yeah. Clint Lowry is the guitarist I could play chunky, and it totally works. Very just seven dust. And then you throw LeJohn on there, and it's just like, that is seven dust through and through. Uh, in and car news, I saw an interview with him, and well, it's evident he's not a car guy. He picked a very practical thing that he's got a pilot. Like, yeah, I, re- I really it. like that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a Honda pilot. It hauls a family yeah. around. It, yeah. it never breaks. <laughs> like, he's not a car. It, guy. It's commendable that you've got something that just. Works. Just works. Yeah. Instead of like, yeah. yeah um, you know, the LaForza broke down again, and I'm going to set it on fire. <laughs> How on earth is this mechanically an exploder, but yeah. it's worse? Clint Lowry played guitar on Seether's album before this last one they just entered, uh, just just released. Did he really? Clint Lowry from Seven Dust. Clint Lowry. <laughs> Clint Lowry's a great guitar player. Clint Lowry has a signature model from Paul Reed Smith. He has a Paul Reed Smith signature model. No shit. Mm-hmm. They don't make it anymore, but he did have a signature model at the time. They, they, Clint Lowry's a great guitar player for Seven Dust. And I think Black was the first song I heard from them in Denial. Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, there was, uh, Who Do You Pray To? Uh, I have the first album, but... They're Prayer. from Atlanta. Yeah. They're yep. from they're from Atlanta, uh from ninety four. And they still play they just have a they have a new album out now. And they I have had like listened, twelve albums. Yeah, or I haven't listened to any of the new stuff. Uh they've got a Day I Try to Live cover. I've heard a, it. Wait, a Soundgarden cover? N- yeah. Yeah. A, really? It it's weird. It sounds flat. It's I'm it's not very, crazy about it. I mean, following up. Cornell is going to be can't, hard. You can't. You shouldn't. Well, don't. Well, but the Cornell the, version has the highs and the lows, and this one just has the, the lows and the mid. Totally. Like it doesn't. Then I try to live. 
it doesn't the have like the which only Cornell can hit those. Of course. I mean, obviously you just did, but I'm saying like, not well, but, but, <laughs> yeah. but if you have someone that doesn't, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's a different like well, ten One years, ten years did heart shaped box, and it's yeah, and it's not hard. It it it, it, <sighs> it does justice. It's in key. It's in pitch, but it's not the same. I w- I would love to comment on that actually because I'm go, go for it. I'm a huge Ten Years fan. You know this from and from forever. Knox, no, oh, no, they were no. Knoxville, Tennessee. city, Knoxville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm a huge Ten Years fan. I've been a Ten Years fan for years and years. For um, ten years, for it, honestly, it probably has been about. <laughs> You're probably said, right. Like, I can't place this band <laughs> except for like that one hit. Like, and it's one of well, in the, one that, ear and out the next. That's what bothers me is they're one of the best bands that like no one has ever heard of. I'm like, if you listen to their radio hits, I guarantee you've heard them. And if you have heard them, just take a day and go down the rabbit hole because they have some really really great material. And I really liked Heart Shaped Box. Mm-hmm. Other than. They never let loose, and I mean that as they always kept it this very low, melancholy. I was waiting for the it, breakout. Even the, even yeah. the yeah. shouty bits are just kind of. I wanted, the, eh. shouty, I wanted yeah. the shouty bits, and they didn't do it. Mm-hmm. And I feel hey, like they could have done wait. it. They could. He could have done it. I've got and a real they, complaint. Forever yeah. in debt to your prize's yes. advice. And on the flip side of that, Shine Down went. Way too far with Simple Man. Yeah. It's just not. It's not oh, that good. It, it's really. I'm so not, glad you said that. It's really not. Steve feels really the same way. Like he oversings the shit out of it. If you're going to do an, or if anything, you're going to do a like, subdued version of that, you have to sing it subdued. If you're gonna up sing something, you have to up sing it. But if you're, you can't up sing a subdued. Oversing everything. It, it was. It was too I'm much. going to William Shatner. Their version of that she, song. She fixed my bags. Yeah, last night. Yeah, he was. He Wrong was. Way, he song, was way too much yeah. It really. Somebody was. save me if you can. And then for ten years, the whole time I'm just like blue ball on it, like waiting for the, mm-hmm. and it just never happened. I'm like, fuck. You, you do I'm it. Like big. it was so good. Blue like you were, ball you were going, and you were now going. he's blue ball and now he's. <laughs> Basically, Blue I blue balled one night after a date in high school, and had I hurt so bad I had to stop at a McDonald's and get the girl a McFlurry, and I went to the bathroom and beat off. <laughs> <laughs> Easily the best. Beat I it, <laughs> beat I was it. I like. I gotta go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, you enjoy that. Somebody making mac and cheese in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to McFlurry in the bathroom. <laughs> This is the last time I order mac and cheese from McDonald's. <laughs> it's the only time you order mac and cheese from McDonald's. Go ahead, try that ever. I'll have a mac mac and cheese. <laughs> hey, I want your uh, breaded pickle. I want the McDildo. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I'm ready for some Mexican food. Si, One last question before we leave. Yeah. Do you guys have a cover you like that might even be better than the original? I mean, Garage Inc. from Metallica. Every every uh, most of the covers yeah, on there. Yeah, good chunk really of that. Or um, how I discovered Smith was Anthrax's cover of London. London. Yeah. Not London Calling from. No, 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 no. Different English band. Um, do you think you've made the right decision this time? It was even John Bush era Anthrax covering it. It's it was just a cool tune. Like, what is the song? And that's how I discovered the Smiths. Huh. Prior to discovering Morrissey's a bit of a monster. Yeah. All right. So, Soundgarden did a cover of uh, "Come Together" from the Beatles, and it's actually Ooh. really good. Yeah. My imagination's having fun with this. That one's good. Uh, Calling Dr. Love from Kiss, but covered by... (laughs) Wait. (laughs) Dr. Love from Kiss, but covered by Rage Against the Machine with Maynard singing. Cool. Is amazing. Have you heard... You haven't heard that? I have not heard or nor heard of this. Wait, with Maynard 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 singing Rage... The band band from Rage. 
Calling uh, Dr. Love. Number no, baby, her so bad. You're about the one I've ever had. It's really fucking good, man. That one's good. I'm not, I'm obsessed with anything Maynard, so. that It's really, we'll listen to have that. You have you had any of his wine? No, have you? No. no I don't I know would love to. where I could find this. We'll get that you and see Ron White's tequila, which uh, is named? Uh... Number one. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's been a while since I heard that WTF interview. Mm-hmm. It's like it, it's I would love clever that because it's him. Yeah. Um, yeah. By the way, he has a winery in Arizona. Like, how bad is your global warming if we can do that? Okay. Anyway, who? Learn to swim. See you on Arizona Bay. And that's why he's there. By the way, my he's least favorite waiting. cover. I'm sorry. This is Lenny Kravitz, American Woman. I like that, and you nope. don't. No, you don't nope. like that. Nope. I nope. love it. No, nope. nope. I think that's nope. a great. Nope. That's a great cover. Nope. Nope. I nope. hate nope. Johnny Cash's nope. cover of Hurt. I don't oh, like. I, see, I really like. I think that's better than the original. I don't, but I don't like. I I think it just meanders, and it's just cool because Johnny Cash is Johnny Cash. Well, I feel like if anybody else did it. Here's my thing: it if Trent Risner if. Sorry, Trent Reznor is thank singing you. it. Yeah, mm-hmm. Thank you. I've seen Nine Inch Nails. Three I don't times. believe. Go it. on. When you have an old ass guy that's been through the shit that he's been through, like Johnny Cash sing, sing, sing Johnny Take Cash, two. Johnny Take Cash three. singing it. Yeah. Yes. I actually believe it. So to me, his cover is fantastic. The style of it, I appreciate, but I don't enjoy listening to it. Okay, fair. Um. I know he did, he did Rush the Cage better, but no. I forever <laughs> no. love the original Rush the Cage. Yes, because the three DO and like er, other early CD based gaming systems cover of he didn't Road Rash. Note. That's the opening track. He doesn't hit the note at the end. Can't and won't. Why the fall is on the road? That one. You gotta hit that note. I didn't even know Rusty Cage was a remake. Uh, Johnny, Johnny Cash, Cash did cover remake of <laughs> yeah. Soundgarden. Rusty Soundgarden's Cage. Rusty Cage. Oh no 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 yeah. no 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 no! I didn't realize that. Oh, you can't remake that song. No, well, you can't re- it, it was all right. If you're remaking th- this is, Nine Inch right, Nails, it was Rusted <clears throat> Cage. No, you can't remake Rusty Cage. Only Cornell can sing Rusty Cage. This that, is up some of ladder. That, that's Cornell. Uh oh. Rap anyway. You gotta. Got to pee? It's, it's gotten more dire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. It's more dire than pee. <laughs> Ron's there for all my color shorts. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait for you to get back. We'll, yeah. we'll be Tombow yeah. Debt. We'll be Tombow no, Debt. Only Cornell can sing Rusty Cage. I, I can't imagine another artist that can hit. I mean, Rusty Cage is a Cornell song. He hits every Cornell note. No way Johnny Cage or Johnny. <laughs> <Jesus. We're coming. laughs> No way Johnny Cage hits that note. <laughs> I've been drinking too much. Boy, ha- Johnny Cage. Aren't you glad you don't have to drive home? Yeah. And it's a weekend, it's Friday night. Aren't you glad I don't have to drive home? Yeah. I live the, Yeah, the, so I live. Or they have to sing behind Chris Cornell. Yeah, it it He's my favorite. I was it didn't hit me. Like we were we were in St. Augustine when I woke up and Emily was up. She's like, have you read any? She's like, I, I need to tell you something. I was like, what? She goes, Chris Cornell's dead. I was like, what? Because yeah. he's the reason. When I first got into rock music when I was like 12, like yeah. it was Soundgarden I got into. And it was just the the, the huge voice. Oh, yeah. And the, the rest of them. The rest of the band is way underrated because of the, they were, pardon the pun, but outshined by Soundgarden. Like the re, the rhythm section's great. Kim Thale's a great guitar player. Yes. So, but when you listen to it, it's like the Soundgarden was like the the modern Led Zeppelin. Yes. Whereas Alice in Chains was like the modern Black Sabbath. Yes. So you had the the dark, the heavy, the brooding, a super grungy that. that. And then you had the experimental, but also heavy, but different, different time signatures, the 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 
the vocalist who had the presence, the the range, brightness, and and you said it earlier, brightness, and I think brightness is a number one. It applies to Zeppelin, and I think it applies to Cornell as well. Versus the Lane Staley, the which rough, was very dark, just dark. Mm -hmm. You could tell that dude's been through some shit. Yep. And but Jerry and, Cantrell wrote most of the lyrics. Correct. Right. And, and but a he, lot of but he found the right guy to sing it. A fucking course. And, and, and no one could ever duplicate. And the new Allison Chains is so good. Have you listened to a lot of the new stuff yet? Yeah, I love it's William Duvall. It's still very, very good. Yeah. I love William Duvall. Is people hate on like there are Lane apologists, sure. who, and I understand it because he he was brilliant. But William Duvall is amazing vocalist and a really good guitar player too. So William Duvall played in a three piece band called Comes with the Fall, who was the only he was the only guitar player in the band. Really? So he is a really good guitar player and he brings a depth to Allison the new Allison Chain. There are the have you listened to Raining Your Fog, the new album? Nope. It's amazing. And it's so good. And it's it's a very Allison Chain's album. It just has William Duvall singing it. Right. And the thing is a lot of lane apologists who are only lane and that's it. If it's good enough for Jerry Cantrell, it should be good enough for you. Right? I mean, he's amazing. How can you not trust that guy? I sent him a message. I he sent was the him creator a message. of the, f I mean, come on. I sent him a message Duvall on Facebook. I was like, Cantrell. Duvall. I was like, nice. I was like, dude, I was like, I don't know if you're going to read this or not, or even if it's you. I love the new Allison Chain stuff, and I love what you've brought to the band. And he sent me a message back, said, "Thanks, man, appreciate it." I mean, can you nice. imagine trying to step into those shoes? It's no, no. it's impossible. Like, no. It'd be like trying you to find a new Kurt Cobain, uh, yeah. exactly. or like fucking no. A. Yeah, roll, roll clock back to nineteen eighty. You're yeah. Brian Johnson. You need to follow Bon Scott. Uh, it's like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Like, who the, wants to do that? What in the hell yeah. you gonna do? Yeah, and they even kept the same, you know, it is Alice in Chains. Like, they kept the same name. Yeah. It, it, yeah. You know, Jer it's, Jerry writes most of the music, all the music, but yeah. the only songs that, all right, so the only music that uh, Lane Staley wrote was Hate to Feel and Angry Chair. The music part. So, and you, you know Angry Chair. Have you heard Hate to Feel? What the fuck? I'm, I'm what sure a I tank. Have. So, yeah, yeah, that yeah. part. But and and Lane wrote some now of the lyrics that. too. But Jerry wrote most most of everything else. Yeah, you want to know what my favorite song is from them? I think what is it? Is Nutshell. I love Nutshell. And it's if you look the at the lyrics, the, yeah. Um, the, well, the, the acoustic specifically, but like the everything they did in the acoustic was the best of toned down. Yes. Uh, and just Over now. perfectly done. Over and the now thing is, is when you look at how simple those lyrics actually are, it's like two verses, right? Mm -hmm. Of like four lines there's, each. There's not much, but they are so fucking powerful. Like, you yes, you yeah. made something brain melting. Yeah, and to tone it down. Yeah, there, there's something to be Will said not for that. Be an easy task. Yeah, no, there's something to be said for for simplicity. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, but you can have too many. There, there are there. All right, so there's there's music I can listen to. Like, Tool Tool is hard to listen to if you're an a rock and roll fan. But if you have to be, you have to appreciate the artistry of that kind of music. See, I'm a huge and fan. I like I like Tool and I like yeah. a Perfect Circle. I don't like Pussifer that much. Pussifer's more experimental. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I haven't really gone down that rabbit hole. You know, the new one, worth, though. Well, for right. worth, no song from Pussifer can be country boner. No. That's the funniest thing ever. Apocalyptical is a great... Have you seen Apocalyptical from Pussifer? Negative. It's fantastic, and it's about the pandemic and uh, Cheeto Marino, who's like, running the country now. No, it's like, Cheeto like, Marino. Yeah, the, that. The, the dude from Deftones? Agent what Orange. No, not Chino. Ah. Cheeto. Che Cheeto. Here's the funny thing is Cheeto Mussolini. A Alice in Chains song, song like Nutshell mm -hmm. that had two verses and a chorus. Yeah. Was I don't know, four minutes. Tool takes those same amount of lyrics, yeah. another eighteen minutes. And I love them both equally because <laughs> one of my favorite songs that Tool has come out with is Descending. 
And it is this, I don't even know how to describe it. A very building, almost like a call to arms song that makes you by the end of it want to just like flip your desk over. Mm -hmm. Because they, they address local and current events of like, we're essentially asleep at the wheel as a human species. We're asleep at the wheel and we're fucking crashing and no one wants to step up and do anything. And that I find that, um, I don't Out. know, inspiring mm -hmm. because I, I see it. Like, I feel like we, we all see it. Mm -hmm. Well, Steve, what do you think your favorite Alice in Chains song is? If I go outside Alice in Chains and go Mad Season, ooh, I mean November Hotel. November Hotel is good. It's so good. <laughs> Love Mad Season too. Yeah. Uh, Do you know what the Mad Season is? Yeah, it's a combination of Alice in Chains and isn't it Pearl Jam and Why, Soundgarden? Mudhoney. It's all of them, isn't it? Why they named it that, rather? No. That is the season in which your psychedelic mushrooms grow best. <laughs> <laughs> which explains all the fantastic music. Uh -huh. It does, doesn't it? Uh-huh. <laughs> doesn't it? No, never mind. Like That's a fantastic name for a band, a supergroup, a one-off, whatever it have you. it was a supergroup, too. Yeah. And it's fantastic. But, <laughs> yeah, that's... I love all those like, super... You know, Temple of the Dog. I love the super groups. And that was the precursor to Mad Season, uh, Pearl Jam. Okay. That that was the tribute to Andrew Wood from Metal Love Bone, who died of a heroin overdose in 1990. Who was Chris Cornell's roommate, <coughs> and Temple of the Dog wound up thwarting everything that Mud Honey did. That the oh, no, my love bone did. It's like it's good. It's early. Let's show her a few bands that will take this idea and do it better and platter. <coughs> and they did Seattle. until one of them died of an overdose and yeah. one killed himself. Well, and then uh, no. grunge that was a brutal. Well. Grunge is the only outfit that you've seen all the major players die <laughs> in some way or the other. Yeah, other than Eddie Vedder. Except for Eddie Vedder. So he is going to get bow wrapped. And Jerry Cantrell. Cantrell, yeah, to me, well, always seemed very grounded. He didn't. Yeah, I, I don't uh, think I've ever seen a bad headline about him. Never. You know, and he's never been married. For, perhaps has he never has he never been married? No yeah. kids, no married. You know, for us, Listen, Texas. Like, All right, well, Austin, Texas. Tra you know, Steers and queers. Worth, who knows? Like, yeah. uh, what's that? Do, the Ministry Side Project? Mm -hmm. Revolting Cox. Yeah. Beer, Steers and queers. Mm -hmm. It's bizarre. <laughs> um, thing sucks. I was trying to pull the thread, and I just yeah. I think my favorite Alice in Chains song, and this is going to be blasphemed to a lot of Lane apologists, but it's Private Hell. That's from the, a good one. From the um, first Duvall album. I don't even, I'm sure I've heard it over the years, but I'm not sure if I recognize it. Give away, very contrary. Give away a love, then remove another two. Painted words adorn the walls, echoing untrue. Promises abound. You rarely find it to begin. Maybe I'm afraid to let you all the way in. It's so pretty. and it's oh! like po That's like poetry. I excuse myself. I'm used to my little cell. I amuse myself in my very own private hell. Yeah. That's so pretty. That is Guys, that's nice. Guys, you don't do. And then they grunge it all up. Like, God, it's so pretty. Oh, my God. It, it the last song on that album. from like 2010. Yeah, that like the genre is effectively dead, but they're still doing it. The last song on Black Gives Way to Blue, the first album with William Duvall singing, is called Black Gives Way to Blue, and Jerry wrote it. But uh, Elton John plays piano on it. Damn, and it's so pretty. It's 
It's it's about it's Jerry like it's Jerry's official goodbye to to it and it yeah. took him like it, it he in interviews he said like to Lane to like to Lane it, he wow. said it took him a lot of takes to get through that song oh I, mean, I can't and, even imagine yeah and I I it's it's really pretty I'm I'm gonna pr- I'm gonna pull it up before we leave it, it's really pretty I can't even imagine having to write that song. Just to begin with, it, I mean, they grew. I mean, they grew up like Lang, when they yeah. first started. They, Lang was so young, they he couldn't get into the clubs they were playing, so he had to sneak they in had, the back. No, or he something. had to he had to if play the show, the talent, and then when they were done, he had to leave the club. Like, jeez, I don't want to feel no more. It's easier to keep falling. Imitations are pale. Emptiness. All tomorrows are haunted by your ghost. Lay down. Blank gives way to blue. Lay down, I'll remember you. Fading out by design, consciously avoiding changes. Curtains drawn, now it's done. Silencing all tomorrows or forcing a goodbye. Lay down, black gives way to blue. Lay down, I'll remember you. That's heavy. That's really fucking heavy. Really heavy. Yeah. It just took him a lot of takes to get through that. I'm sure. By the way, every, every Duvall album, Fallis and Change is really fucking good, too, so... Almost three hours in. Isn't right. it easy to do this three hours? Oh, I love it. I mean, I mean this is, especially on a, on a Friday night, I mean, it, we get to sit here and drink yeah, drinks. and say, yeah, It's the same I, thing we talk about cars I and beer and I stuff we always do anyway. Morning, so yeah. so uh, that took the edge off. That, yes. Uh, my, my shop's been a bit compromised, so yeah, you don't have to work tomorrow. Cool. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> want three Saturdays in a row. <laughs> Not I, a problem. I got... I, I have big plans to do nothing and final list of laptops worth more than I paid for. I Excellent. hope. But Plus 30 bucks shipping. We're going to listen to music after this while we're waiting on Paige to pick you up. Uh, yeah. The, we're going to meet at Taxco. So you're going to meet us at the Mexican restaurant. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we, so we can listen to one or two songs of before accordions. then. Yes. Uh, but seriously, thank you guys for having me back. I'm, I'm well, glad I was your, your first repeat. Yes. I feel way more comfortable this time not wearing the headphones. I can hear myself. Uh, That's fair. I, Steve doesn't have I, to wear I have to wear them because I produce the show. Sure. But I can hear you, and you're coming through just fine. Okay, good. Uh, I have no idea what I'm doing, but <laughs> usually uh, I, I need to lean in more to this because I'm busy <laughs> fucking this all up. Yeah. But the more time it passes, the more he's figured out the ins and outs of fixing it. So there you go. This doesn't matter <laughs> anymore. That's and like compression you were talking uh, about. Uh, looks like I'm going to sick a duck. All right. <laughs> well, time for Mexican food. Uh, si, Brian, thanks for coming out again. Of course. Uh, thank you. Cheers. Absolutely. I'm AJ. I'm Steve. You are Steve. Where did this shit start? Yesterday! I I, I didn't see it at all, sorry. All right, bye. Hasta Luigi. Toodles. What is this, an old episode? Yes. Get, Get off my screen.